I'm Buzzy the Knowledge Bug. Are you ready to explore the jungle? There are parts of three jungles here, all from different parts of the world. The Amazon area includes the jungles of South and Central America. It holds many neat things, like toucans and monkeys and even blue frogs. The African area has elephants and electric catfish and chameleons. In the Asian area, there are dragons and spitting fish, and even a plant that eats bugs. Why, there are just hundreds of things to see and do. So what are we waiting for? Let's go! Gee, you can see all three jungles from up here. These jungles are all tropical which means they grow near the Earth's equator. Another word for jungle is rainforest. There's bound to be some interesting animals at that waterfall. The Southeast Asian jungle can be found in countries like Indonesia, New Guinea, Malaysia, and Thailand. Taper. T-A-P-I-R. These shy animals are smaller cousins of the horse and rhinoceros. Tapers live alone, spending most of the night eating plants on the jungle floor. Their keen sense of smell helps them find the tastiest plants, and they use their flexible nose to pull the food into their mouth. When scared, tapers run and jump into a nearby river and swim underwater. If the taper is lucky, the enemy will leave before the taper comes up for air. Floor, F-L-O-O-R, there. The ground, or bottom layer of the jungle, is called the floor. It is often cool and dark there, because the understory and canopy trees block most of the sunshine. The plants that live on the floor have big, thin leaves to catch the small amount of light on the floor. The floor is covered with fallen trees and leaves that are food to the beetles and other bugs that live there. Zebra plants, moon rats, and okapi all make their home on the floor. Komodo dragon, K-O-M-O-D-O-D-R-A-G-O-N. This reptile is one of the world's biggest lizards, growing up to 10 feet long. Because they are so big, Komodos are sometimes called the land crocodile. Although they stand low to the ground, Komodo dragons can attack animals as big as a taper. Komodos use their long, thick tail to knock away other animals trying to get at their food. After eating a big meal, a Komodo dragon will be full for days and spend its time just lying in the sun. Waterfall. W A T E R F A L L. A river that drops down a long way is called a waterfall. Waterfalls are found all over the world. Angel Falls is the highest waterfall in the world, plunging 3,212 feet over a rugged cliff. That's higher than the tallest skyscraper ever built. Angel Falls is really hard to get to, though, because it is deep within a very thick jungle. Dole, D-H-O-L-E. These wild jungle dogs don't bark. Instead, they talk to each other by whining, growling, and whistling. So sometimes they're called the whistling dog. Doles travel through the jungle in packs, looking for food. They'll follow an animal for hours, jogging along until it gets too tired and stops running. If a tiger tries to take their food, Doles will chase it away, even though the tiger is twice their size. Doles are very ferocious animals. 
not at all like the friendly dogs people have for pets. Macaque. M. A. C. A. Q. U. E. The monkeys with the funniest hairdos have to be the macaques. The hair on their head often looks like a hat, a bonnet, or a lion's mane. Some macaques live near rivers, beaches, or mangrove swamps because their main food is crabs. They sit along the river's edge grabbing crabs with their hands. They can even dive deep into the water chasing the crabs because these monkeys are excellent swimmers. Monkey. M-O-N-K-E-Y. Monkeys are related to apes, but the two are not the same. Like apes, monkeys have eyes on the front of their head instead of on the side like many other animals do. Unlike apes, most monkeys have tails that help them balance in the trees or act as another hand. Monkey hands have thumbs, and both hands and feet are perfect for grabbing tree branches. Monkeys also have smaller brains and rounder chests than apes, and only live to be 30 years old. Howler, squirrel, spider, pygmy marmoset, mandrel, woolly, and macaque are all types of monkeys. Squirrel monkey. S-Q-U-I-R-R-E-L-M-O-N-K-E-Y. Squirrel monkeys get their name from their small size and the short jerky movements that are so like a squirrel's. Squirrel monkeys travel in large groups, swinging through the canopy trees until food is found and then coming together to eat. While they like the safety of the canopy, they will travel down to the understory and floor in their search for berries, nuts, and fruits. Squirrel monkeys will also gobble up insects, spiders, lizards, Watson eggs, and even tent bats. When they aren't eating, they play and take turns cleaning each other's short fur. Orangutan. O R A N G U T A N. Orangutans are apes with long reddish orange fur and puffy faces. Their arms are so long, the fingers hang down almost to the orangutan's ankles. The orangutan's long grasping toes are perfect for holding fruit as it swings through the trees with its long arms. If the next tree is too far away to swing to, an orangutan tries to push another nearby tree over and ride the falling tree to the next tree. They prefer to live alone, spending most of the time high up in the jungle canopy. In fact, the orangutan is the largest animal that lives in trees. Mangrove. M A N G R O V E. Tangled roots growing right out of the river make these trees look like gangly dancers. Above water, the bare roots breathe the air. Underwater, the roots trap mud, leaves, and other scraps to anchor the tree to the river bottom. Its spear length seeds begin growing into trees while still on the parent tree. Once a baby tree drops into the water, it quickly sends its roots to the bottom to keep it from floating away. 
While dangerous creatures like mangrove snakes lurk in its roots, mangroves also give a home to proboscis monkeys, birds, and other friendly creatures. <laughs> That chicken must be lost. This is the jungle, not the farm. That snake in the tree looks as long as a car. Ugh, I'm glad we can't smell that moon rat. I heard he smells just like rotting onions. That chicken must be lost. This is the jungle, not the farm. Tiger. T I G E R. Tigers are one of the biggest cats in the world. Their dark stripes and orange fur make them hard to see in the shadows of the jungle floor. Tigers hunt alone at night, walking very quietly and crouching down so they can sneak up on tapers and other animals. When attacking an animal, tigers take one big leap and pull it down by grabbing its throat. A tiger can eat 55 pounds of food in one meal and will hide any leftovers. On hot days, tigers cool themselves by swimming in ponds and rivers. Jungle Fowl J-U-N-G-L-E-F-O-W-L Strutting around the jungle floor, these lanky birds look a lot like chickens. They're really jungle fowls, the ancestors of the chicken. Like the cock of the rock, the female's feathers are dull, while the male's feathers are bright and showy. To attract a female, the male performs an amazing dance where it bows down and flaps its wings. If another male tries to cut in on the dance, they fight with the sharp spurs on their feet. Moon rat. M O O N R A T. If a smell like rotten onions floats over the jungle floor, the moon rat is probably close by. These bad smelling creatures spend their nights hunting for bugs, fish, crabs, and snails. They can also use their long nose to dig up tasty roots. The moon rat's only real enemies are snakes, which seem to enjoy eating moon rats in spite of their bad smell. Fungus. F U N G U S. Funguses are in a class by themselves because they are not animals and not plants. Molds found growing on bread, mildew growing in the bathroom, and mushrooms are all different types of fungus. Funguses cannot make their own food, so they grow on plants and animals to get food. Funguses grow best in warm, humid areas and are very common in jungles. Many types of fungus are useful, slowly changing the dead plants and animals that they live on into soil. Some funguses are bad because plants get sick when the fungus grows on them, or animals get sick when they eat the fungus. 
Naturalists know of more than 100,000 types of funguses, but at least twice as many types are still unknown. Weaver ant, W E A V E R A N T, or these unusual ants make their home in the understory by sewing up a leaf. First, an ant chooses a leaf and works to fold the leaf in half. Once the edges start to touch each other, more ants join in and hold the leaf's edges together. Baby ants spin out a silky thread, which the parents use to sew up the leaf. Inside the sewn leaf, the ants make a nest for as few as 12 or as many as 300 ants. After making the nest, they begin the important task of looking for bugs to eat. Weaver ants either grab the bugs with their big jaws or spray the bugs with poison. Treehopper, T-R-E-E-H-O-P-P-E-R. Even though these bugs eat tree sap right in front of their enemies, they are hardly ever noticed. Tree hoppers sit close together on a branch where their color and pointy shape make them look like part of the tree. Enemies glancing at them don't even notice them. Pitta, P I T T A. This colorful bird prefers the safety of the night. Pittas feed at night, taking long, easy hops along the jungle floor as they look for food. They usually eat seeds, berries, bugs, and snails. When they catch a snail, the pitta throws the shell onto a stone to break it and quickly gobbles down the exposed snail. Even though they have a fat body and short tail, pittas can fly away quickly if they're scared. If they need to escape an enemy, they can make a cry that sounds like it's coming from somewhere else. The enemy then walks toward where it thinks the pitta's voice comes from and the pitta has time to fly away during the confusion. When? Seed. S. E. E. D. The. The beginning of a new plant is called a seed. Seeds come from mature trees and plants. Inside the hard seed cover is a baby plant and food to help the plant grow. Seeds travel by falling, sticking to animal fur, blowing with the wind, or floating on the water. Once they land on the ground, they can start to grow. If they get enough rain, food, and sun, they grow into a plant just like the one which made the seed. When the new plant is big enough, it will make its own seeds. Python. P-Y-T-H-O-N. Pythons and anacondas are the biggest snakes in the world. Some pythons have grown to be as long as 30 feet. In spite of their size, pythons are hard to see because their brown patch skin blends in with the colors of the jungle. Pythons hunt both during the day and at night, using the tip of their tongue to smell food. Once they catch a small animal, they squeeze the life out of it and then swallow it in one big piece. Anacondas. Anaconda. A N A C O N D A. Anacondas and pythons are the world's largest snakes. Anacondas can grow as long and thick as a telephone pole. These reptiles spend most of their lives in the river, floating just under the surface. Their eyes and nose grow high on their head, so the rest of their body can hide underwater as they sneak up on food. Wrapping their long body around a victim, anacondas squeeze it to death and then swallow it down in one big gulp. Anacondas will usually eat small animals such as birds, fish, and lizards. Some anacondas are so big that they can even swallow a whole caiman. After a big meal, they may not be hungry again for several months. Reptile. R-E-P-T-I-L-E. Crocodiles, lizards, and snakes are all different types of reptiles. While most animals make their own body heat, reptiles need the sun to keep them warm and are often seen sunning themselves. A reptile's skin is waterproof, 
which comes in handy for reptiles like the anaconda that spend so much time in the water. Most reptiles protect themselves in one of two ways. Some, like the cobra, bushmaster, and gaboon viper, are poisonous, and animals stay away from them. Other reptiles, like the chameleon, iguana, and emerald tree boa, use their skin color to hide from enemies. That archer fish has the best spit pole ever made. <laughs> That horseshoe crab is one of the oldest living creatures on Earth. It looks like Muscle Beach under here. <laughs> That archer fish has the best spit pole ever made. Ruby, R, U, B, Y. The beauty of this stone comes from its red color. Rubies were formed in the earth a long time ago from colorless rocks that have another mineral mixed in with them. If the rock then became red, it was a ruby. Otherwise, it became a sapphire. Not only are they beautiful, but rubies are also about as hard as diamonds. People find rubies the same way they find gold, by searching in rivers and caves. Diamond. D I A M O N D. A natural diamond looks like a pebble of cloudy glass. But once it's cut and polished, this stone sparkles like the valuable jewel it is. The best diamonds are colorless or blue-white. But diamonds can also be yellow, brown, pink, dark blue, or green. Like gold, diamonds are found in caves, rivers, and in the ground. Diamonds were made long ago from special rocks buried deep underground. These rocks got very hot and were squeezed tightly for a very long time. The heat and pressure made diamonds one of the hardest rocks in the world. In fact, diamonds are also used to cut glass and are put on drill bits to drill through rocks. Gold. G-O-L-D. Most rocks and dirt have bits of this shiny yellow metal in them but it would cost too much money to get the gold out. When a big layer of pure gold is found in the rock of a cave wall, people can make a lot of money from it. Gold is a very soft metal, and it will often bend instead of break. Its softness makes it very useful for making things, and people have used it to make jewelry for thousands of years. Electricity can pass through gold very easily. Gold is used in jewelry, Teeth fillings, spaceships, TVs, and computers. Cave. C. A. V. E. Caves are just holes in the earth. Some may only be as big as a bedroom, but others can be bigger than whole houses. Bats are often found hanging from the roofs of caves, but they aren't the only things in caves. Most caves have stalagmites sticking up from the floor and stalactites hanging down from the ceiling. Underground springs or rivers run through some caves, bringing water to the animals that live there. A cave may have fish or crabs or water opossums or mushrooms and other funguses. Diamonds, emeralds and other jewels are sometimes found in caves too. <laughs> Horseshoe Crab. 
H O R S E S H O E C R A B. The outer armor of this crab is shaped like a horseshoe. A spiky tail sticking out of the back of their body looks dangerous, but really isn't. Horseshoe crabs crawl along the bottom of shallow rivers, eating clams, worms, and seaweed. Horseshoe crabs have claws on each of their ten legs, instead of the two claws that most crabs have. They also have blue blood, which doctors can use when testing people for some types of illnesses. <coughs> Muscle. M. U. S. S. E. L. All you can see of these shellfish is their shell house. The mussel shell is made up of two halves that are joined at the bottom with a thick thread. Living inside the shell is the mussel, a creature that looks like a white blob. They walk by pushing out a blobby foot to slowly crawl along the river bottom. Mussels usually dig down into the sand or mud and leave just the tip of their shell showing. With the tip open, mussels feed on the tiny things floating in the water. If sand gets inside the shell, some mussels coat it with a substance to make it less irritating. This coated sand is what we call a pearl. <coughs> Fighting fish. F I G H T I N G F I S H. This beautiful fish swims just below the water's surface. Fighting fish are covered with red, green, or blue dots, usually arranged in a row. While these fish look nice as they quietly feed on crabs, worms, and bugs, they are really quite mean. Males are especially unfriendly and will put up a good fight to keep other fish out of their area. Attacking males will try to eat each other's fins until one swims away. Their name fits them very well. Archer fish. A R C H E R F I S H. These fish use their mouth like a water gun, shooting bugs off of leaves and branches with squirts of water. Archer fish can hit a bug as far as six feet away and quickly gobble it up when it falls into the river. Their aim is so good they hardly ever need more than two shots. If a bug is very close to the river, sometimes the archer fish will jump right out of the water to get it. Most archer fish live in mangrove swamps and rivers. Palm tree. P A L M T R E E. Palm trees usually have straight, thin trunks without any branches. Some trunks are as thin as a pencil, while others are as wide as a bed. Unlike most trees, the palm tree's trunk will stay the same size for most of its life. At the top of the trunk grow tough, leathery leaves shaped like a long feather or a wide fan. Palm trees can usually be found growing in any hot jungle. One of the tallest is the coconut palm tree. Coconut. C O C O N U T. Coconuts are the seeds of coconut palm trees. The huge hairy shells hang way up in the top of the tree and fall off once they're ripe. People often don't want to wait for the coconut to fall. They will either climb up the tree to get a coconut, or cut off the coconut with a knife stuck in a long pole. A hungry coconut crab will also climb the tree to get to its favorite food. Since coconuts float and the trees will grow near the ocean, coconuts have floated to shores all over the world. During, slow loris. S. L O W L O R I S. The slow loris moves as slow as a sloth, but it's really a lemur. The loris hangs from a branch during the day, sleeping with its head tucked between its feet. At night, the slow loris moves through the understory trees in search of food. It's not a fussy eater, 
eating anything from fruit to leaves to smaller animals. After a meal, it goes back to resting or cleans itself with its comb-like front teeth. Understory. U N D E R S T O R Y. Between the jungle canopy and floor is the understory layer. It is shadier here than in the canopy, but not as dark as the jungle floor below. The understory trees don't grow quite as tall as canopy trees, and there are fewer plants and epiphytes on them. Animals like the potu, slow loris, and lemurs can easily move from tree to tree in the understory. Canopy. C A N O P Y. Below the pavilion trees is the layer of thick canopy trees. Here, the rain, bright sunlight, and heat all help things to grow. Canopy trees can be as tall as ten-story buildings, and are covered with leaves, flowers, lianas, and epiphytes. With so much plant life around, it's hard to see all the animals that live here. Flying snakes, sloths, bush babies, and orangutans are just some of the animals that live in the canopy. Hey, somebody better tell those fish to get back into the water. Those coconuts sure look heavy. I wonder if they sink to the bottom of the water. Mud skipper. M U D S K I P P E R. These odd little fish come out of the water and crawl on the mud. They still need water to breathe, so they hold water in their gills as they move from one water pool or river to another. Mud skippers can skip around as far as two feet before needing another gulp of water. In water, mud skippers hide in the mud and only come out to snap up nearby food with their big mouths. When mud skippers fight, each raises its fins in warning and then charges the other fish. But their attacks seem harmless as they just hit each other with their open mouths. <laughs> Mangrove snake, M-A-N-G-R-O-V-E-S-N-A-K-E. This dangerous snake is named for the mangrove swamps where it lives. The brightly colored rings of the mangrove snakes are a warning that they have poison in their fangs. They hunt at night, searching for birds, rats, and mice. Poison. Coconut crab, C O C O N U T C R A B. Coconuts are this crab's favorite food. If it isn't lucky enough to find a coconut on the ground, the coconut crab goes right up the coconut tree to get one. Using its sharp leg tips like spikes, the crab can walk up a tree trunk as high as 80 feet. Then it snips off a coconut with its large claw and lets the coconut drop to the ground. The crab must then walk backwards all the way down the tree. If the crab is lucky, the coconut broke open when it hit the ground. Otherwise, the coconut crab opens the coconut with its claws. Then it scoops out the inside with its legs and has a feast. Komodo dragon, K-O-M-O-D-O-D-R-A-G-O-N. This reptile is one of the world's biggest lizards, growing up to 10 feet long. Because they are so big, Komodos are sometimes called the land crocodile. Although they stand low to the ground, Komodo dragons can attack animals as big as a taper. Komodos use their long, thick tail to knock away other animals trying to get at their food. After eating a big meal, a Komodo dragon will be full for days and spend its time just lying in the sun. Mm -hmm.
Black Panther B L A C K P A N T H E R Sometimes a spotted leopard will have a baby that is almost pure black. These black leopards are called black panthers. Their fur still has spots like a normal leopard, but it's hard to spot dark spots on dark fur. Hunting in the dark shadows of the jungle floor and understory, black panthers seem to appear out of nowhere when they attack. The tallest trees in the Asian jungle are found here in the pavilion. Look at the nose on that monkey! Proboscis can be another word for nose. So I guess we know how it got its name. The plants on this tree seem to like living in the air instead of being planted in soil. <laughs> E P I P H Y T E. Epiphytes are plants that grow high up on tree branches in almost every jungle. They are nicknamed air plants because their roots are mostly in the air instead of in the ground like most plants. Epiphyte roots grow on tiny bits of dirt, old leaves, and fungus on the tree branches. The only water they get is rain. So most epiphytes have leaves that trap the rainwater. One type of epiphyte, the bromeliads, can hold a small pool of water with their leaves. Many animals in the canopy and understory use the epiphytes as their source of food and water. Proboscis monkey. P R O B O S C I S M O N K E Y. These monkeys were named for their long noses, which keep growing their whole lives. Not only are their noses big, but so are their bellies. Inside their bellies live small bugs to help the proboscis digest the leaves and fruits it eats. The bugs also help the monkey get rid of any poisons in the leaves. When they aren't eating or sleeping, proboscis monkeys might go down to the jungle floor for some swimming. They high dive from mangrove trees and dog paddle across rivers, ponds, or even out into the ocean. Fishing boats have rescued lost proboscis monkeys far out in the ocean. Mosquito M O S Q U I T O. The mosquito lives any place where it's warm and wet. The humming sound of the mosquito is made by its wings moving 1,000 times each second. As the sun goes down, mosquitoes fly around and eat the sweet juice from flowers. But female mosquitoes also bite people and animals, needing the blood to make their eggs. The female mosquito lays her eggs anywhere she can find water, even in puddles and buckets. As she sucks the blood out of an arm or leg, the mosquito's spit mixes with the blood. 
When the mosquito flies away, the spit left behind causes the swollen itchy bump called a mosquito bite. The spit also has germs in it, which can make people sick. Bird wing butterfly, B I R D W I N G B U T T E R F L Y. When these butterflies fly through the pavilion, people on the ground often think they are birds. That's because bird wings are the biggest butterflies in the world. From wingtip to wingtip, they can measure as much as 12 inches across. The bird wing's bright colors warn enemies that they are not good to eat. The bird wing also eats plants that make them smell and taste so bad that few animals want to eat them. Butterfly. B U T T E R F L Y. These beautiful bugs fly about during the day, going from flower to flower. Butterflies use the feelers on their head like a nose, smelling the air for the scent of flowers. Once a flower is found, the butterfly's long tongue sucks up the flower's nectar or juice. Butterflies come in all sizes, from the giant birdwing butterfly down to ones the size of a stamp. The wing colors and patterns are made by thousands of tiny scales that cover the butterfly's wings, like the tiles on a roof. The colors can be used for more than just decoration. Some butterflies, like the leaf butterfly, have wings that let them hide among trees or rocks. Other butterflies have colors and patterns that warn other animals that this butterfly is poisonous. Have you seen those blue birds? I mean, butterflies? To get around in the canopy, most animals jump, fly, or glide. Have you spotted which are the orchids and which is the orchid mantis? To get around in the canopy, most animals jump, fly, or glide. That tailor bird has sown a nice nest of leaves for her baby. Orangutans sometimes stay up here in the canopy for almost a month. Good thing they're not afraid of heights. To get around in the canopy, most animals jump, fly, or glide. Orangutans sometimes stay up here in the canopy for almost a month. Good thing they're not afraid of heights. <laughs> comes from the small round berries of a climbing jungle vine. The berries are picked while they're still green and unripe. The green berries have a tangy pepper taste. Spread out to dry, they turn black and shriveled, giving them a strong pepper taste. Other times, the ripe red berries are picked, soaked for several days, and peeled. When they are dried, they turn white and have a mild pepper taste. Most people use black and white pepper berries ground together to season their food.
Orangutan. O R A N G U T A N. Orangutans are apes with long reddish orange fur and puffy faces. Their arms are so long, the fingers hang down almost to the orangutan's ankles. The orangutan's long grasping toes are perfect for holding fruit as it swings through the trees with its long arms. If the next tree is too far away to swing to, an orangutan tries to push another nearby tree over and ride the falling tree to the next tree. They prefer to live alone, spending most of the time high up in the jungle canopy. In fact, the orangutan is the largest animal that lives in trees. Bird nest. B I R D N E S T. Nests are the houses that birds build for their babies. Most birds make their nest on tree branches. Other birds, like the parrot and hornbill, put their nest in a tree hole. And some birds, like the shoebill and bowerbird, make their nests on the ground. Nests are made of grasses, twigs, leaves, and mud. Most birds also put feathers, sawdust, or fine grass on the bottom of the nest as a soft pillow for their fragile eggs. Parrot. P A R R O T. Parrots are friendly birds that fly through the canopy in big, noisy flocks. They make many different sounds and even repeat the songs of other birds. Most parrots are green or gray. But others are more colorful, like the macaws. Parrots can hang like acrobats to get fruit, which they hold in one foot to eat. They also eat seeds and nuts, which are easily opened with their nutcracker-like beaks. When it is time to raise babies, hollow trees are their favorite places to build a nest. Macaw, M A C A W. This bird is one of the most colorful parrots around. Their loud screeching noises, slow flapping wings, and long tails also make them easy to spot. Macaws spend their days looking for seeds, nuts, and fruits. Macaw nests are built in holes in trees, usually in the understory or canopy part of the jungle. Macaws are popular pets because they are friendly and can be trained to repeat words. Stick insect. S T I C K I N S E C T. Like the orchid mantis, the stick insect's appearance can fool enemies into thinking the stick insect is merely part of a plant. If that fails and it is attacked, the stick insect has three ways to escape. It can either squirt the attacker with poison. Jab their enemy with the spikes on its legs, or just fall off the branch. Stick insects can grow up to 12 inches long, which is pretty big for a bug that only eats plants. That tailor bird has sewn a nice nest of leaves for her baby. Bamboo. B A M B O O. Bamboo is a giant grass that can grow to be 100 feet tall. Not only can it get as tall as a tree, but it grows very fast. Some kinds can grow one foot in a day. When a jungle has been clear cut, bamboo is one of the few things that can thrive. Bamboo is hollow inside, where sometimes bugs, snakes, and frogs live. The outside of the bamboo can become quite hard. So bamboo is often used instead of wood to build things. People use bamboo to make pipes, cups, baskets, chairs, houses, and even rafts. <coughs> Taylor bird. T A I L O R B I R D. So, as their name suggests. These small birds are tailors that love to sew. They make their nest by poking holes in two leaves and then sewing the leaves together with pieces of bark, vines, or even spider webs as thread. 
The stitched leaf pocket is then lined with soft grass and animal hair to make a soft inner nest. By putting the nest inside the leaves and by building the nest where the jungle plants are thickest, enemies have a hard time finding it. With the nest hidden, the parents can fly off to look for bugs to eat. Gibbon. G I B B O N. This type of ape has such long arms, its knuckles can almost touch the ground even when the gibbon stands straight up. Long arms make it easy for the gibbon to swing from tree branch to tree branch. If a nearby tree is too far away to swing to, the gibbon can leap almost 20 feet to reach it. They also have a great sense of balance and can run along branches like tightrope walkers. Gibbons spend most of their days high in the canopy looking for fruit to eat. Their cries, perhaps telling the world that this is their tree, are almost as loud as the howler monkeys yelling. Orchid mantis. O R C H I D M A N T I S. The orchid mantis looks so much like an orchid flower that enemies do not always see it. The mantis will even rock back and forth, acting like an orchid flower gently blowing in the breeze. When small bugs that don't see the mantis come too close, the mantis quickly grabs them with its thorny arms and gobbles them down. When enemies do manage to spot it, the mantis will try to fly away. If an enemy grabs a leg, the orchid mantis will even break off its leg to try to escape. Orchid. O R C H I D. Orchids are plants with very small, pretty flowers and a sweet smell. There are many different kinds of orchids, but most are epiphytes, living high in the jungle canopy. Some orchids look like bugs to fool real bugs into thinking that they have found a mate. The bugs then get covered with the orchid's dust when they walk in the orchid, which helps the plant grow. Some bugs, like the orchid mantis, instead look like the orchid, so they can't be seen. Orchids are used for food, drinks, and medicine. But most people just like to look at orchids. <laughs> Flying fox. F. L. Y. I. N. G. F. O. X. Flying foxes are endangered animals. Animals are endangered when there are very few of them left in the world. Many jungle animals are endangered because their homes are destroyed as jungle trees are cut down. If these animals and their homes are not protected, they can become extinct. That means there are none left. This isn't really a fox, but a large bat that kind of looks like a fox. Flying foxes are probably the biggest bats in the world. Their bodies can be as tall as a book, and their wings from left wing tip to right wing tip can be as long as a broom. They use their hook-like claws to hang upside down in the canopy trees. Flying foxes may look scary, but they're quite harmless and only eat fruit. During the day, they cover themselves with their wings and sleep upside down. The bats feed at night, leaving their babies hanging together in nursery trees where they practice flapping their wings. Wings.
aren't doggies, they're dolls. Those tapers spend almost 90% of their day eating. They may not really be pigs, but they sure eat like one. I wonder if anyone has ever slipped on a banana peel in the jungle. Fiddler Crab. F-I-D-D-L-E-R-C-R-A-B. Male Fiddler Crabs have one normal claw and one huge claw. This huge claw is often seen flashing in the sun when a Fiddler Crab is warning other crabs to stay away. Both male and female Fiddler Crabs use their small claws to pick up the tiny plants they eat. Each crab makes a tunnel in the sand, burrowing down as deep as a foot. When the tide comes in, the crab covers the tunnel hole with a mud door and sits inside its dry home until the tide goes back out. Scorpion. S. C. O. R. P. I. O. N. Scorpions can grow up to five inches long and their tail often has a poison stinger on the end. Scorpions use the stinger to knock out the spiders and other bugs they eat. Scorpions that lose their legs or tail in a fight can grow them back if they live long enough. Scorpions hunt at night and in the day hide under rocks or in cracks to keep cool. Female scorpions carry their babies around on their back until the babies can take care of themselves. Dole. Banana. B A N A N A. This soft fruit comes in all sizes, as small as 3 inches and as big as 12 inches. Bananas also come in colors from pale yellow to dark red. One type of banana, called the plantain, must be cooked before eaten and tastes a bit like a potato. The first banana tree farms were started in India over 4,000 years ago. When banana farms were started in Africa, chimpanzees soon discovered how good bananas tasted. Today, banana trees grow in jungles all over the equator. Clear cut. C L E A R C U T. A clear cut is an area where all the trees have been cut down. People clear cut jungle areas to make room for things like banana or bamboo farms. Sometimes areas are clear cut so the trees can be used as fuel for homes and factories. But if too much of the jungle is clear cut, the jungle animals and plants don't have any place to live, and they die. When very few of an animal are left, the animal is called an endangered species. Taper. T-A-P-I-R. These shy animals are smaller cousins of the horse and rhinoceros. Tapers live alone, spending most of the night eating plants on the jungle floor. Their keen sense of smell helps them find the tastiest plants, and they use their flexible nose to pull the food into their mouth. When scared, tapers run and jump into a nearby river and swim underwater. If the taper is lucky, the enemy will leave before the taper comes up for air. Ginger. G I N G E R. Below the long stem and grass like leaves of this plant grows the knobby brown root called ginger. Ginger has a hot sweet flavor that is used in cooking soups, meats, cookies, and cakes. It is also used in drinks like ginger ale and to flavor some medicines. All these things can be made from fresh ginger root or from a powder made from dried ginger root. Pitcher plant. P-I-T-C-H-E-R-P-L-A-N-T. 
Most plants are content to make food from sunlight and dirt. But pitcher plants prefer to eat bugs. Its leaves are shaped like a water pitcher, with juice sticking to the opening. Bugs land on the leaf and follow the juice trail into the bulging center. Once inside, the bugs fall into a pool of poison in the center and drown. Some pitcher plants are so big, a pigeon could fit inside. Bower, Bower bird, B O W E R B I R D. A bower is an archway of leaves and vines shaped like the letter U. The male bower bird builds his bower to attract a female. He starts building the bower out of sticks and then decorates it with colorful flowers, seeds, berries, and plants. After the bower is finished, he calls the females to see his colorful bower. If a female approves of the male's bower, both bower birds leave the bower to start a family. The actual nest is built out of twigs in another part of the jungle. Peacock, P-E-A-C-O-C-K. These birds are known for their fan-like tails which they use to attract a mate. The females are actually called pea hens, and like the female cock of the rock, have dull feathers to make them hard to see when they sit on their nests. Also like the cock of the rock, it is the male that is the colorful one. Both males and females eat seeds, fruits, and bugs. But they are really not very picky and will eat almost anything. People have reported peacocks chasing each other all around the bamboo stalks. Then the peacocks just stop and walk away. Naturalists are still trying to figure out this odd behavior. Cock of the Rock C-O-C-K-O-F-T-H-E-R-O-C-K -E Like the peacock, it's the male cock of the rock that is the more colorful. Only the males have the bright orange feathers that make this bird so recognizable. The males gather in big groups on the jungle floor, all using their colorful feathers to try and attract a female. But the male doesn't help the female hatch the eggs. Only the female will sit on the nest, because her dull brown feathers make it hard for enemies to spot both her and the nest. To be extra safe, the female often makes her nest on ledges high above the jungle floor. Wow! Look at the size of that red flower by the tree! I'll bet that's about the biggest flower in the world! I've heard there are elephants around here. Let's keep our eyes open. Wow! Look at the size of that red flower by the tree! I'll bet that's about the biggest flower in the world! of that red flower by the tree. I'll bet that's about the biggest flower in the world. Pitcher. Hanging Parrot H A 
N G I N G P A R R O T. Like the flying fox and vampire bat, these parrots prefer to do their sleeping upside down. Hanging parrots are small birds, about the size of a robin, with green feathers and a brightly colored head. They don't talk as much as most parrots and have a much softer voice. During the day, hanging parrots climb around the tree branches, eating fruit, seeds, and nuts. They can use their tail feathers to carry things to their nest, something other parrots don't do. Leaf butterfly, L E A F B U T T E R F L Y. When these butterflies have their wings close together, they look just like a brown leaf. Lying on a pile of leaves on the jungle floor with their wings closed, an enemy would probably walk right past the butterfly. It is only when the butterflies open their wings that the brightly colored tops of their wings can be seen. Leaf butterflies are very rare, living mostly in the thicker jungles where their favorite food plants live. Rafflesia, R A F F L E S I A. Found on the jungle floor, the rafflesia is about the world's biggest flower. It lives by attaching itself to other plants, drawing food from them. It doesn't have any leaves, but its bud is as big as a basketball, and the open flower can be as wide as a car tire. It may take up to two years to grow, but then the rafflesia can bloom several times. It's also one of the stinkiest flowers in the world. Its smell and color make it seem like a dead animal, which attracts insects. These insects land inside the rafflesia and carry away pollen dust that will later become new rafflesia. Cobra, C O B R A, themselves. The cobra is one of the deadliest snakes in the world. Instead of squeezing their victims like the python and anaconda, cobras have a fast-acting poison they use when they bite their victim. When a small animal is bitten, the cobra's poison takes effect before the animal can run away. The poison is so powerful. A single bite can kill an elephant in four hours and a person in fifteen minutes. Some cobras can even spit the poison at a victim. When cobras are afraid or surprised, they raise themselves up and puff out the skin around their head to make themselves look bigger. They also make a hissing sound, warning other creatures that the cobra is willing to fight. <laughs> What happened to the spots on that leopard over there? Minus can imitate any bird song in the jungle. Pet Minus can even learn to imitate words.
The macaques are good swimmers and like to dive after crab. That ginger plant is making me hungry for some gingerbread cookies. The macaques are good swimmers and like to dive after crab. Black Panther. B L A C K P A N T H E R. Sometimes a spotted leopard will have a baby that is almost pure black. These black leopards are called black panthers. Their fur still has spots like a normal leopard, but it's hard to spot dark spots on dark fur. Hunting in the dark shadows of the jungle floor and understory, black panthers seem to appear out of nowhere when they attack. Leopard. L E O P A R D. Leopards have a knack for blending into the area they are in. They spend the day snoozing on understory tree branches, where their spots let them blend in with the shadows. Hunting on the jungle floor at night, the spots let the leopard easily sneak up on their food. Black panthers are still leopards, even though their fur looks all black. Leopards eat almost anything, from beetles to okapi. To make sure they aren't bothered while eating, leopards will carry their food up into a tree. Leopards are great leapers, able to jump 10 feet up into a tree or 20 feet across to another tree branch. Waterfall. W A T E R F A L L. A river that drops down a long way is called a waterfall. Waterfalls are found all over the world. Angel Falls is the highest waterfall in the world, plunging 3,212 feet over a rugged cliff. That's higher than the tallest skyscraper ever built. Angel Falls is really hard to get to, though, because it is deep within a very thick jungle. Strangling Fig S T R A N G L I N G F I G Tree This tree lives off of other trees. A strangling fig seed drops into the top of a canopy tree where the seed starts growing into a little fig tree. The little fig's roots grow down the tree to the jungle floor, wrapping themselves around the first tree as they grow. After 100 years, the strangling fig covers so much of the first tree, the first tree can't get enough sunlight or water and dies. The ficus tree is a house plant that is also a strangling fig. Red-tailed racer. R-E-D-T-A-I-L-E-D-R-A-C-E-R. It's. With a red tail and the ability to run after and catch its prey, it's no wonder these snakes are named red-tailed racers. But these snakes prefer to wait for their food, lying on rocks, branches, or in caves. By wrapping their tail around rocks or trees, racers can stretch out and grab birds right out of the air. Like the python, red-tailed racers kill their food by squeezing instead of with poison. If attacked, racers puff up their body to look bigger and hopefully scare away the enemy. <laughs> Macaque. M-A-C-A-Q-U-E. Can. The monkeys with the funniest hairdos have to be the macaques. The hair on their head often looks like a hat, a bonnet, or a lion's mane. Some macaques live near rivers, beaches, or mangrove swamps because their main food is crabs. They sit along the river's edge grabbing crabs with their hands. They can even dive deep into the water chasing the crabs because these monkeys are excellent swimmers. Minor bird. M Y N A B I R D. Like parrots, minor birds are known for their talent of repeating what they hear. They don't really know what they're saying, 
but are just good at imitating sounds. Minor birds fly through the canopy in noisy flocks, landing together at night and sleeping in the same tree. When fighting other minor birds, usually over food, they foot wrestle. First, the two birds leap about on the jungle floor, flapping their wings and making low cries. Then they try to grab onto each other's feet and pull the other minor to the ground. Gosh, rainforests sure have a lot of trees. The African jungle animals are certainly different from the Asian and Amazon ones. We've got a bird's eye view from here, but let's get closer to all the wildlife. Gosh, rainforests sure have a lot of trees. River, R, I, B, E, R. When water flows along the ground, it is called a river. Most rivers start up in the mountains as rain or snow and flow downhill into a sea or lake. Places that have a lot of rain, like the jungle, usually have a lot of big rivers. Rivers are home to plants and animals, such as mussels, piranhas, bodo dolphins, and archerfish. Over time, river water can even make caves out of rock and dirt. Piranha, P-I-R-A-N-H-A. -A. Legends say that these fish will gobble up everything in the river, but they're not that terrible. Most piranhas eat sick or hurt animals. Some only eat tiny bits of fins or tails on other fish, which then grow back. And the paku only eats fruit. Piranhas do have sharp teeth, but they're very tiny teeth, and each can only take tiny bites. But just because they can't gobble their food, this doesn't mean that piranhas are harmless. Large groups of piranhas have been known to eat a cow in minutes. Paku, P A C U. These fish are a type of piranha that only eat fruit and plants. To get fruit, they will wait under trees until the ripe fruit drops into the river. Paku are slow swimmers compared to other piranha, maybe because Paku do not have to chase their dinner. Crocodile, C-R-O-C-O-D-I-L-E. Although one of the biggest living reptiles with huge jaws full of large teeth, crocodiles are rather timid animals. Even the cries of nearby birds can scare them into hiding underwater. In the water, crocodiles swim around with a swish of their strong tails. They can also stay underwater, lying on the river bottom for over an hour. Crocodiles prefer a slow life and only need to eat one meal a week. Large fish are their favorite food, but they can also use their strong jaws to pull land animals down into the water. When crocodiles are not floating in the cool river, they are sunbathing on shore with their mouths wide open. It may look silly, but the hot sunlight in their mouth helps warm up a crocodile's cold blood. Crocodiles like to sit in the sun to warm up. Good thing they don't get sunburnt. <laughs> mm. 
has got their name from the strange call that they make. I wonder what those chimps are doing back there. Ring-tailed lemur. R-I-N-G-T-A-I-L-E-D-L-E-M-U-R Ring-tailed lemurs have a long fuzzy tail with black and white rings on it. They search the floor for fruit and insects, walking on all fours and with tail waving. Climbing up into the understory trees, the ring-tail will jump from tree to tree in search of flowers and leaves. At night, they curl up and sleep in a tree hollow or in a cave. Ring-tailed lemurs like to be in the warm sunshine, sitting upright with their arms out and their eyes closed. But even with their eyes closed and their heads sagging, they are still listening for danger. Mandrill monkey. M-A-N-D-R-I-L-L-M-O-N-K-E-Y Mandrills definitely have the most colorful face of any type of monkey. When angry, their blue and red faces get even more colorful and they will yawn to show off their four-inch-long fangs. Mandrills are just as powerful as the gorilla, so getting them angry is a bad idea. Mandrills actually tiptoe through the jungle, walking only on their fingertips and toes. They normally eat fruits and vegetables, but will also eat ants, beetles, and other insects. Mandrill monkey. M. A. Animals. Mandrill monkeys are endangered animals. Animals are endangered when there are very few of them left in the world. Many jungle animals are endangered because their homes are destroyed as jungle trees are cut down. If these animals and their homes are not protected, they can become extinct. That means there are none left. Gaboon Viper G A B O O N V I P E R. Lying among the brown leaves on the jungle floor, this deadly snake is hard to spot. Gaboon vipers try to pick a place where mice and other small animals go, then spring out and bite the animal with their two inch long fangs. Not only does the gaboon viper have one of the longest sets of fangs in the world, but their fangs are filled with poison. One bite has enough poison in it to kill 20 people. Sifaka. S-I-F-A-K-A. -A. Like the ring-tailed lemur, Sifaka lemurs love to sit in the sun with their hands out. Sifakas live in groups of four to nine, spending most of the day resting in the understory trees or eating the tree's leaves, fruit, and bark. They prefer to get around by jumping from tree to tree. Sifakas have strong back feet that they use to launch themselves into the air, using their arms to steady themselves when they land. Since their legs are made for jumping, Sifakas that come down to the jungle floor must hop along instead of walking. Leopard. L-E-O-P-A-R-D. Indri, I-N-D-R-I. One of the biggest lemurs is the two-foot-tall Indri. Besides being the biggest, they are one of the loudest. 
When an Envry family gets together, their deafening chorus can be heard almost two miles away. Their calls warn other Endries not to come into the family's home area. The Endries spend their days constantly looking for fruit, flowers, and young leaves to eat. <laughs> Traveler Tree T R A B E L E R T R E E Jungle travelers can get a refreshing drink from this plant even during the dry season. Rainwater collects in a hollow at the top, formed by the long overlapping stalks of the big fan-like leaves. Although it looks like a palm tree, this really is just a plant and not a tree at all. What looks like a trunk is really just hard pieces of leaves left behind when the old leaves fall off. The plant's beautiful white flowers grow on long spikes from the center and then turn into a blue fruit. That leopard sure looks comfortable, doesn't it? Wow, it looks like that tree pangolin has armor plating. Chameleons are best known for the way they can change color. Aw, what a cute little woodpecker. Chameleons are best known for the way they can change color. Woodpecker. P Y G M Y W O O D P E C K E R. The tapping of this pint sized bird can be heard throughout the jungle. Their beak can hit a tree almost faster than the eye can see, yet it doesn't seem to hurt the woodpeckers at all. The woodpecker hits its strong pointed beak against understory trees to get to the bugs under the bark. After pecking a hole, the woodpecker's long tongue digs out the bugs crawling inside. The woodpecker's feet, with two toes pointing up and two toes pointing down, can grab onto a tree like a pair of pliers. This makes it easy for the woodpecker to hang onto the side of the tree while tapping. Pygmy woodpeckers also use their beak to talk to each other by tapping out special rhythms. <coughs> Pangolin, P-A-N-G-O-L-I-N. The pangolin is also called the scaly anteater because its long sticky tongue is perfect for grabbing ants, while its tough scaly skin prevents bites and stings. Their long sharp claws come in handy to tear open the nests of another favorite food, termites. When the pangolin is frightened, it rolls into a tight ball that even a leopard doesn't know what to do with. Pangolins usually look for food at night and spend their days sleeping in hollow trees. Ter termite. T E R M I T E. Termites are small insects that live together in groups of a million or more, called a colony. 
Termites are best known as insects that eat wood. But really, each termite in the colony has a job. The queen spends her life laying eggs in the nest and having the other termites take care of her. Nobles are the termite nannies, taking care of the baby termites. Soldiers have big heads and pinchers to guard the nest from enemies. Workers find the food for the colony, bringing bits of dead trees and plants into the nest. Tiny bugs living in a termite's belly help the termite digest its tough food. Indri, I N D R I. One of the biggest lemurs is the two foot tall Indri. Besides being the biggest, they are one of the loudest. When an Indri family gets together, their deafening chorus can be heard almost two miles away. Their calls warn other Indries not to come into the family's home area. The Indries spend their days constantly looking for fruit, flowers, and young leaves to eat. Leopard. L E O P A R D. Chameleon. C H A M. E L E O N. These reptiles are actually able to change the color of their skin. Chameleons can turn bright colors to frighten away other chameleons. They can also match the colors of the understory trees where they sit. A chameleon may even flatten its body and rock slowly back and forth like a leaf in the wind, hoping bugs will not be aware that a chameleon is close by. The only part of the chameleon that moves a lot is its eyes, which can each look in a different direction. This lets it watch for bugs in two different directions and decide how far away a bug is. When a bug comes near, the chameleon's long, sticky tongue shoots out to catch it. A chameleon's tongue is so long, it must be rolled up to fit inside its mouth. Reptile. R E P T I. L E. Crocodiles, lizards, and snakes are all different types of reptiles. While most animals make their own body heat, reptiles need the sun to keep them warm and are often seen sunning themselves. A reptile's skin is waterproof, which comes in handy for reptiles like the anaconda that spend so much time in the water. Most reptiles protect themselves in one of two ways. Some, like the cobra, bushmaster, and gaboon viper, are poisonous, and animals stay away from them. Other reptiles, like the chameleon, iguana, and emerald tree boa, use their skin color to hide from enemies. I I A Y E A Y E. Tapping on trees is how this lemur spends its nights. Eye eyes use their long middle finger to tap on tree trunks, trying to startle any bugs inside. When they hear a bug moving under the bark, eye eyes use their sharp teeth to bite a hole in the tree. Then they use their long finger to reach into the hole and pull out a tasty bug meal. It's easy to spot where the eye eye has been. Just look for a well-bitten tree. Colobus monkeys take turns sleeping, so one is always awake to watch for enemies. Colobus monkey, C O L O B U S M O N K E Y. These monkeys are very shy and rarely come down to the jungle floor. Even though they don't have thumbs, their hook-like hands make swinging from branch to branch very easy. When jumping between trees, their arms, legs, and long tail are stretched out so the long hair can act as a parachute to slow them down. Colobus monkeys live in family groups that move from tree to tree. They usually stay in a canopy tree for only a day or two until they eat all the fruit and leaves there. The family sleeps huddled together. Except for one colobus that looks out for enemies.
Colobus monkeys take turns sleeping, so one is always awake to watch for enemies. Hey, look in that tree. Is that a snake? Or is it a vine? Turacos are good climbers, but they can't fly very well. Turaco. T U R A C O. These brightly colored birds live in small, noisy family groups. Just like the Watson, the Turaco can't fly very well, but it can easily scramble around tree branches. Turaco babies have claws on their wings to get out of their rickety twig nests and practice climbing on nearby branches. These birds eat fruits including certain berries that will poison people, but don't bother the Turaco at all. Sunbird. S-U-N-B-I-R-D. These small birds can hover around flowers like a hummingbird, although they prefer to perch on a branch. Their special tongue has a flap to spoon up a flower's juice, but they will also eat tiny insects. Female sunbirds weave a raindrop-shaped nest from grass and hang it from a tree branch. They choose a branch near a wasp nest, because most enemies don't want a chance to run in with a wasp. <coughs> Flatted. F-L-A-T-I-D. In the jungle, what looks like a flower on the end of a twig may really be flatids. Flatids are bugs that often sit in a group drinking the sap from young trees and shrubs. In a group, their bright colors fool enemies into thinking that they are flowers. And if they're bothered, the flatids fall off the tree, just like falling flower petals would. Cola nut. C. O. L. A. N. U. T. It is amazing that this nut, with its bitter taste, ever became useful. But if the nut is prepared in a special way, it can be used in cola drinks and in some medicines. The cola nut grows inside a long leathery pod that grows on the cola tree. While cola nut trees grow in the jungle, they can also be raised on farms called plantations. Most of the nuts used in cola drinks are grown on cola nut plantations. Vine snake. V I N E S N A K E. When wrapped around a tree branch, this snake looks like a harmless jungle vine. About as long as an adult's leg and no fatter than a finger, the vine snake may lie motionless in a tree for hours. Its eyes constantly watch for movement in the understory and canopy. When it spots a bird or lizard coming close, the vine snake quickly bites the animal with its poison fangs. <coughs> Oh, <laughs> my
Bush baby. B U S H B A B Y. Bush babies are hard to spot at night because their fur blends in with the shadows and dark sky. Their big eyes and large ears also help the bush baby to see and hear bugs flying by or walking along the canopy trees. Bush babies can even see and hear tiny mosquitoes, actually grabbing them right out of the air with their long fingers. They also jump from branch to branch, searching for fruit and nuts. This is a cozy little home, isn't it? Eventually, Mom will leave and the hornbill chicks will seal up the nest again. I hope she doesn't forget anything on the way out. Oop. Boy, I could barely squeeze through that tiny opening. Bird nest. B I R D N E. S. T. Nests are the houses that birds build for their babies. Most birds make their nest on tree branches. Other birds, like the parrot and hornbill, put their nest in a tree hole. And some birds, like the shoebill and bowerbird, make their nests on the ground. Nests are made of grasses, twigs, leaves, and mud. Most birds also put feathers, sawdust, or fine grass on the bottom of the nest as a soft pillow for their fragile eggs. Horn Hornbill. H-O-R-N-B-I-L-L. -L. The hornbill is a bird that makes a very odd nest. The female hornbill searches high in the pavilion looking for tree holes for her nest. Then she sits inside the hole and covers the opening with mud, bird droppings, and chewed food. She leaves a small opening as she covers the hole, just big enough for a bird beak to poke through. Pythons and other enemies cannot get into the covered hole, so she and her babies will be safe. Since the female is shut inside the tree, the male hornbill brings food for both her and the babies. As the babies grow, the mother will break open the hole and go out to help get food. The baby hornbills then recover the hole until they too decide to leave the nest. The male hornbill brings food to his family up to 40 times a day. You can see all over the African jungle from up here in the pavilion. The male hornbill brings food to his family up to 40 times a day. Oh, You can see all over the African jungle from up here in the pavilion. Kapok tree. K-A-P-O-K-T-R-E-E. -E. This common pavilion tree can grow as tall as a 10-story building. The branches at the top spread into a wide, flat crown and are covered with epiphytes. The kapok tree grows up to 10 feet in a year. It takes a lot of sunlight to grow that fast, so kapoks are usually found along open riverbanks and in clear-cut areas. 
Once every five years, adult kapok trees grow white flowers, which give off a sour smell that attracts bats. The bats, covered with pollen from drinking the flower's nectar, spread the pollen to other flowers. And soon after, the flowers turn into hundreds of seeds. Silky fibers help the seeds blow away on the wind, drifting down to land somewhere on the jungle floor. at the size of that frog! It's gigantic! That stork almost looks prehistoric! I wonder if there are any babies hiding under the lily trotter's wings. <laughs> Some people call the royal antelope the king of hares, probably because of how far the antelope can jump. Pygmy Hippopotamus, P-Y-G-M-Y-H-I-P-P-O-P-O-T-A-M-U-S. This small hippopotamus is about the size of a very large pig. Its small size makes it easier for the pygmy hippo to move around in the jungle. Pygmy hippos spend most of their day resting in the water or on the riverbank. When they go underwater, they can stay there for several minutes before coming up for air. Underwater, their ears have flaps that close shut. But even then, they can still hear. They can even hear sounds behind them, because their ears can turn to face the back. <laughs> Stork almost looks prehistoric. Wow, look at the size of that frog. It's gigantic. Lily Trotter, L I L Y T R O T T E R. Big feet help these birds stand on lily pads. They move from lily pad to lily pad, stopping only to look for food underneath. Lily trotters can swim, but they hardly ever do. The nests they make are flimsy coils of weeds, so some lily trotters keep their eggs underneath their wings for safety. After the eggs hatch, the baby chicks continue to stay under their parents' wings. When the chicks are big enough to take care of themselves, they finally leave their parents' protection. Giant snail. G-I-A-N-T-S-N-A-I-L The giant snail can grow to be as long as 12 inches and weigh over a pound. Like the mussel, 
The giant snail lives in a shell and moves by pulling itself along on a blobby foot. The snail carries its shell home along as it slowly glides across the jungle floor. The fat, worm-like body oozes out a clear slime to make gliding over the ground easier. Its eyes, on top of two long feelers, can't see objects, but can only tell light from dark. So the snail uses its two shorter feelers to smell and feel its way through the jungle. The snail's tongue is covered with sharp, tiny teeth to scrape off the bits of leaves, fruit, flowers, and rotting plants it eats. Goliath Frog, G-O-L-I-A-T-H-F-R-O-G. While the poison arrow frog can fit in the palm of a hand, the Goliath Frog is about the size of a pizza. They may be big, but Goliath frogs are slow jumpers and easy to catch. These frogs spend most of their lives in the deep pools of jungle rivers. They are quite shy, and when scared, they look for a rocky hole to hide in. Royal Antelope R-O-Y-A-L-A-N-T-E-L-O-P-E most antelopes are about the size of a deer, but the royal antelope is no bigger than a rabbit. In fact, it is the smallest antelope in the world. The royal antelope spends the daytime sleeping in the thick jungle bushes. At night, it comes out to eat leaves and plants. The royal antelope has a very simple way of escaping leopards and other enemies. It can leap as high as nine feet when running, dashing away when it lands before the enemy can find it. S H O E B I L L. These long legged birds have a wide beak that is shaped like a shoe. The beak is perfect for finding crabs and fish in the muddy rivers and marshes where the shoe bills wade. They hunt mainly at night, since they are rather shy birds. Shoe bills make a clicking noise with their beaks when talking to each other because they don't have a voice. Their nests are very simple and are usually built in a flat, grassy area. The big male gorilla on the rock is called a silverback. That's because of a streak of silver fur running down his back. Gorillas are apes, not monkeys. But it looks like they're still willing to monkey around. That baby gorilla really takes the phrase horsey ride seriously. The big male gorilla on the rock is called a silverback. That's because of a streak of silver fur running down his back. Gorillas are the biggest of all the apes. Gorillas are really very gentle animals and usually scream and beat their chests only to scare enemies away. Gorillas travel together in families, searching the jungle for plants to eat. They normally stay on the floor, 
but will go into the understory to get a really tasty piece of fruit. If they're thirsty, they soak the fur on the back of their hand in the river and then suck the wet fur. At night, they sleep on beds made from broken tree branches. That big Dung beetle. D U N G B E E T L E. Each night, these beetles come out to clean up piles of African elephant and other animal dung from the jungle floor. Their broad front legs are perfect for pulling a bit of dung from a pile and patting it into a neat ball, while their back legs are used to roll the ball along the floor. Dung beetles can roll the ball almost 50 feet in just over a minute, especially when trying to keep the ball away from other dung beetles. The beetles use the ball as a nursery, burying it and laying their eggs inside. When the eggs hatch, the baby dung beetles can eat the ball until they're big enough to dig their way out. Bird of Paradise B I R D O F P A R A D I S E This plant can be found near rivers and lakes. Its bright flower can look like the head and beak of a bird peeking above the spiky green leaves. People who live in sunny places like to grow this plant in their garden, and flower shops everywhere use it in flower bouquets. Although they don't look alike, the bird of paradise plant is related to the banana tree. Hey! Red frog? That Kenrek can go into a real hissy fit when mad. Elephants have no permanent home. I guess that's why they carry their trunks with them. Don't eat ants, but follow army ants and catch any bugs running from the army. Army ant. A R M Y A N T. Marching together in long wide rows, army ants look like a river flowing across the jungle floor. Special army ants called soldiers guard the ends of the rows, ready to bite enemies with their big jaws. They don't let go once they bite, so some jungle people use a soldier ant's jaws to close cuts and wounds. Army ants will attack and eat almost any creature in their path, including bugs, frogs, snakes, and lizards. Army ants won't actually eat people, but their bite can really hurt. Still, army ants can be helpful to people too. Army ants will march right into houses, attack any other bugs there, and then leave. Tomato frog. T O M A T O F R O G. This frog's bright red color and round shape 
make it look like a tomato. Its brightly colored skin is a warning that the tomato frog is poisonous. If an enemy puts the tomato frog in its mouth, a poisonous white liquid gushes out of the frog's skin. The liquid tastes so bad that most attackers drop the frog and go look for food somewhere else. The weak poison doesn't kill, but enemies remember not to bite this frog again. Antbird. A N T B I R D. When columns of army ants march across the jungle floor, the small ant bird is often found nearby. In spite of their name, ant birds don't eat ants. Instead, they eat the bugs trying to get away from the army ants. Sometimes, ant birds sit on a low branch and gobble up the flying insects trying to escape. Other times, they scurry along the jungle floor after the bugs. If an ant bird is brave enough to stand amongst the ants while catching bugs, it raises its tail up so the ants won't bite it. When trying to win a mate, the males will often catch bugs and offer them to the females. African elephant. A F R I C A N E L E P H A N T. Africa's elephants are the largest animals on land. Although they are similar, African and Asian elephants look slightly different. African elephants found in the jungle have brown tusks, a curve or dip in their back, and larger ears. African elephants fan themselves with their big ears to keep cool in the hot jungle and to blow away bugs. They can use their long trunk like a hand to pick up food from the jungle floor or pull it off understory trees. Their trunk can also suck up river water, then squirt it into their mouths or onto their backs when they want to take a bath. Tro Tropical periwinkle. T R O P I C A L P E R I W I N K L E. This is more than just a pretty plant with pink flowers. It turns out that this jungle flower can be made into medicine that helps some people sick with cancer get better. But very few periwinkles still grow in the wild, so people are trying to protect them. It would have been sad if the periwinkle had been destroyed before people realized that it was so useful. The periwinkle is just one of the jungle plants that are made into medicine. Very little is known about most jungle plants so naturalists study them, hoping to find new medicines. Army ant. A -R -M -Y -A -N -T. Marching together in long, wide rows. Tenrec. T-E-N-R-E-C. Tenrex search for bugs and plants at night, preferring to sleep in hollow trees and logs on the jungle floor during the day. They use their long nose to root out plants and worms. While smaller than most rabbits, Tenrex try to frighten enemies away by bristling their stiff hair, stamping their feet, and showing their teeth with a big hiss. Tiger centipede. T I G E R C E N T I P E D E. The bright orange and black tiger stripes of this bug warn enemies that it is poisonous. Tiger centipedes use the poison in their large claws to stun bugs, small reptiles, and other little animals which they eat. The centipedes use their long feelers to help them find their way along the jungle floor. With 23 pairs of legs, tiger centipedes can quickly move over, under, and around plants. They rest in cool places like under a leaf or a rock to keep from drying out in the hot sun. Hey, 
Hey, that catfish is swimming upside down. I hope he knows where he's going. If this river dries up, the lungfish tunnels into the mud and waits for the water to return. It's a whole other world under here. Hey, that catfish is swimming upside down. I hope he knows where he's going. Wow, that butterfly fish is really colorful. Upside down catfish. U P S I D E D O W N C A T F I S H. These fish like to hide on the river bottom with their belly up. To find food, upside down catfish use their long needle sharp whiskers to touch and taste things. Swimming upside down makes it easier for them to scoop up their food and doesn't seem to confuse them at all. In fact, upside down catfish are really good swimmers and can often outswim their enemies. Because it looks so odd, the upside down catfish is a popular fish with aquarium owners. If this river dries up, the lungfish tunnels into the mud and waits for the water to return. Electric catfish. E L E C T R I C C A T F I S H. These plump fish look something like a sausage with whiskers. Although they look funny, electric catfish can be dangerous. They can give an electric shock powerful enough to kill. But they usually just use their shock to stun their food. The electricity is made by a special part inside the catfish's body, which lies from the tip of their nose to the end of their tail. Not only does this body part help the electric catfish get food, but it helps them see. By making... Lungfish. L-U-N-G-F-I-S-H. These ancient fish need to breathe air instead of water, so they come to the surface every few minutes to breathe. Unlike the Bodo dolphin, though, the lungfish really is a fish. The lungfish learn to breathe air because the rivers where they live often go dry. When that happens, they dig a hole in the river mud. Once inside, they ooze out slime that dries the mud into a hard shelter. The lungfish sleeps in its hole until the rains finally come and fill up the rivers again. Naturalists found one lungfish that had been buried for four years, yet it woke up and swam away when put in water. Na Naturalist. N-A-T-U-R-A-L-I-S-T. A naturalist is a person who learns about nature by watching plants and animals. Naturalists learn the most by watching how plants and animals live while in their real homes. In places that are hard to get to, like the jungle canopy, they make bridges between the trees. One thing naturalists learned is that the tropical periwinkle can make some sick people better. Naturalists believe that in just one jungle, there are still over 10,000 unknown plants and animals. Perhaps some of those unknown plants or animals can help people too. Butterfly fish. B. U T T E R F L Y F I S H. 
This fish can almost run as fast as it swims. If attacked, the butterfly fish flashes its brown spots to try and startle the enemy. This gives the fish time to leap out of the river and run away. The long fins act as legs, moving the butterfly fish across the top of the water. Once they feel safe, they drop back under the water and begin looking for food again. They poke their long, thin noses into cracks and between rocks, looking for small fish, tiny crabs, and bugs. That bridge is the only man-made thing you'll find in this jungle. There are so many plants and animals here that some have never even been seen by people. That bridge is the only man-made thing you'll find in this jungle. Bridge. B. R. I. D. G. E. A bridge is a man-made path to get across a river, hole, or a gap between two trees. The first bridges were simply big trees lying across a river, with one end of the tree touching each riverbank. Today, most bridges are made of stone and metal, so they won't break. In the jungle, rope bridges are used in trees because rope is much easier to carry up the tree than stone or metal. Bridges between canopy trees let naturalists move around the canopy as they study the animals found there. I wonder what's in that tall pavilion tree sticking above the canopy. Not many animals live up here in the pavilion. Considering how high up we are, I don't blame them. Hey, hey, Katie did. I see you. You're not going to fool anyone unless you stand next to some leaves. Not many animals live up here in the pavilion. Considering how high up we are, I don't blame them. Eagle. H A R P Y E A G L E. This black and gray bird is rightly called one of the biggest eagles in the world. Few animals see them sitting up in the pavilion trees. The harpies just sit there, watching and listening for the animals they eat. Then they dive down on the surprised animal, grabbing it with their sharp claws. If they have to, they can chase a monkey through the canopy at 50 miles per hour. At that speed, it's amazing they don't run into a tree branch. But they are very nimble flyers and never run into anything. Flying Gecko. F-L-Y-I-N-G-G-E-C-K-O. The flying gecko lives high in the jungle canopy and pavilion, moving from tree to tree by flying. To be honest, the flying gecko doesn't fly at all. It glides. Flaps of skin along their body, on their tail and between their toes, open up to slow their fall when they jump to another tree. Their long toes have sharp claws, which they use to grab onto the tree branch when they land. 
flying geckos are busiest at night, when the jungle is cooler and fewer enemies are awake. Katie did. K A T Y D I D. The green leaves on a tree branch might really be this bug eating sap from the tree. When their wings are closed, one of these green katydids looks just like a leaf. They sit very still so that enemies won't see them. They will also shake like a leaf blowing in the wind to make enemies believe that the katydid really is just a leaf. Leaf katydids are also musical, rubbing their legs against their wings to make sounds that attract other leaf katydids. Without wild tomatoes like those, we wouldn't be able to eat BLTs. It's hard to believe that these cute capybaras are related to common rats. I know it sounds dippy, but some people make avocado milkshakes. It's hard to believe that these cute capybaras are related to common rats. wild tomatoes like those, we wouldn't be able to eat BLTs. Capybara. C-A-P-Y-B-A-R-A. -A -A. Most rodents, such as mice and rats, are pretty small. A capybara is also a rodent, but it can be as large as a big pig. In fact, capybaras are the biggest rodents in the world. Families of capybara can be found near rivers, where they eat the plants that grow along the riverbank. They are good swimmers and often hide underwater to get away from nearby ocelots or other animals. Once in the water, though, the capybara must watch out for caiman and piranha. O C E L O T. This small cat is often seen climbing through the understory trees. Their gold colored fur has spots and stripes, which make them hard to see in the shadowy branches. Ocelots are excellent climbers, but prefer to hunt on the jungle floor. Usually they hunt at night, preferring to sleep in the daytime. When they find a meal, they crouch down, slowly sneak up on it, and then attack just like a pet cat might do.
Tomato. T O M A T O. What is now a common salad fruit began life as a rare jungle plant. Jungle tomato plants look a lot like the plants grown in gardens, with small yellow flowers and green spiky leaves. Tomatoes grown today can weigh up to three pounds, with the world's biggest tomato weighing in at seven pounds. Although most tomatoes are red, they can also be yellow or orange. At one time, people thought tomatoes were poison and were afraid to eat them. Today, people all over the world eat tomatoes in salads, sauces, and soups. Iguana. I G U A N A. These big lizards are almost everywhere in the Amazon jungle. Iguanas can grow to over six feet in length, which makes them look scary. But iguanas are harmless because they only eat leaves and fruit. Like most reptiles, iguanas love to warm themselves in the sun. Iguanas will sun themselves on branches over a river so they can dive into the water if there is danger or if they get too hot. Iguanas can also hide on land, running up into the understory where their green skin blends in with the leaves. A few iguanas can even change the color of their skin, just like chameleons. Motmot. M O T M O T. Motmots like to rest on branches in the understory. Their long tails swinging back and forth like a clock pendulum. These birds spend their days looking for fruit, bugs, and small reptiles to eat. Sometimes they whack their food against a tree branch to soften it. Motmots hide their nests in tunnels, which they dig on riverbanks. Avocado. A V O C A D O. Jungle animals love to eat this soft fruit as much as people do. Understory animals like the ocelot eat the fruit right off the tree, while animals on the jungle floor wait for the fruit to fall. They gobble up the smooth, salty, greenish mush inside, but the golf ball-sized seed is too big and hard for the animals to eat. Instead, the seed is left behind to grow into a new avocado tree. Avocados are also called alligator pears because of their rough green skin and pear shape. People in the United States use avocados in salads and dips, but people in Brazil make ice cream and milkshakes with it too. Wow! Look at the size of those lily pads. It sure would be fun to sit on those. Basilisk lizards can actually run across the top of water without sinking. Wow! Look at the size of those lily pads. It sure would be fun to sit on those. Oh. 
Escape enemies like the Emerald Tree Boa, these speedy lizards can even run across water. Basilisks don't sink because they have special skin between their toes and they can run really fast, as fast as 7 miles per hour. They can also hide from their enemies by diving underwater, staying there for up to 30 minutes. By then, even the hungriest of enemies gets tired of waiting and wanders away. Anaconda. A N A C O N D A. Anacondas and pythons are the world's largest snakes. Anacondas can grow as long and thick as a telephone pole. These reptiles spend most of their lives in the river, floating just under the surface. Their eyes and nose grow high on their head, so the rest of their body can hide underwater as they sneak up on food. Wrapping their long body around a victim, anacondas squeeze it to death and then swallow it down in one big gulp. Anacondas will usually eat small animals such as birds, fish, and lizards. Some anacondas are so big that they can even swallow a whole caiman. After a big meal, they may not be hungry again for several months. Ca caiman. C A I M A N. Caimans are reptiles. Except for a slightly wider mouth, they are almost identical to their cousin, the crocodile. They spend a lot of time in the river, using the back and forth movement of their tail to move them through the water. Caimans are not fussy eaters and grab whatever food they can catch. When they see a fish, snake, or bird, the caiman's big mouth can swallow them with one gulp. They will even pull capybaras off the beach. Sometimes, caiman will lose their teeth as they gobble up their food. But there is no such thing as a toothless caiman, because their teeth always grow back. Scarlet Ibis. S-C-A-R-L-E-T-I-B-I-S. It's easy to spot this long-legged bird as it wades in the water. The ibis can't see the river bottom very well, so it searches along the muddy bottom with its long beak. Its curved beak can easily pick bugs, crabs, fish, and clams out of the mud. Scarlet ibises hide their rough twig nests in the tall grasses, and each parent takes a turn sitting on the eggs. Giant lily. G I. A N T L I L Y. A child can easily sit on this plant's pad, which can grow as wide as a king size bed. The pad has tubes filled with air on the back that help keep it afloat. Under the lily pad, a long stem goes down to the lily's roots on the river bottom. The lily also grows a flower that smells a little like pineapple, attracting certain beetles. The flower then closes with the beetle inside and stays shut for one whole day. When it opens again, the beetle is covered with the lily's pollen dust and flies away. The pollen dust will eventually be rubbed off and make new giant water lilies. Cormorant. C O R M O R A N. These birds can be seen diving into jungle rivers and lakes. Under the water, cormorants chase fish by paddling with their webbed feet and steering with their tail feathers. Once they catch a fish in their beak, they come up to the surface and gobble it down. Cormorants really like the upside-down catfish, although they have a hard time swallowing them because of the catfish's spiny fins. 
After about an hour of diving and eating, a cormorant will head to the nearby beach or trees to dry its wings in the sun. Hoatzin, H-O-A-T-Z-I-N. First, flying is not what these odd-looking birds do best. They can barely fly, and when they do manage to fly, they usually end with a crash landing. However, all Hoatzins are first-class swimmers. Hoatzins build their nests over water as a way of protecting their young. Baby Hoatzins use a sharp claw on each wing to crawl out of their nest and dive into the river at the first sign of danger. When they feel safe, the babies use their claws to climb back up the tree to their nest. The claws vanish when they are three months old. Both baby and adult Hoatzins will only eat leaves. The leaves stay in their belly for two days and often give off a really bad smell. So Hoatzins are also known as the stink bird. Tarsier, T A R S I E R. Like monkeys and apes, tarsiers are primates. Tarsiers are only about the size of a squirrel, but they have large saucer-shaped eyes and big ears. The oversized eyes and ears help tarsiers see and hear at night when they hunt for food. Although they live in the understory, tarsiers sit close to the jungle floor so they can jump down on bugs and reptiles that pass below. They catch food with their sharp teeth, then quickly jump back into the safety of the tree branches to eat their meal. When tarsiers go hunting, baby tarsiers come along by clinging to their mother's fur. That peepa toad is one flat animal. Arowanas are nicknamed the water monkey. But they don't look much like a monkey to me. It must be because of how they leap right into the air. That green Darwin frog might be keeping babies in its mouth. The babies may prefer that, but I prefer my nice cozy nest. motion of the stingray's fins looks a lot like a bird flapping its wings. Their flat bodies, fin to fin, can be wider than a car. Stingrays gobble down small crabs and other shellfish, smashing the shells with their blunt teeth. Stingrays like to cover themselves in the sand and rest at the bottom of the river. But the capybara or jaguar that steps on them by mistake will be limping for days from the stingray's poisonous tail. Hatchetfish, H-A-T-C-H-E-T-F-I-S-H. 
These flat fish have bulging bellies, making their body shape look sort of like a hatchet or small axe. Their eyes are close to the top of their body, so they can see bugs flying above the water. When they see one, they jump right out of the water to catch it. Their fins act like wings to help them almost fly just above the water. If they have to, they can fly as far as 16 feet away to escape from an enemy. Darwin Frog, D-A-R-W-I-N-F-R-O-G. Named after the naturalist who discovered them, Darwin frogs have a good way to protect themselves. Their skin looks like a leaf, so animals that eat frogs will hopefully ignore them. The male Darwin frog also has an odd way of raising its babies. When the babies come out of the eggs, the male scoops them up into his mouth. The babies go into the frog's large vocal sacs, though, instead of his stomach. This stops the frog from making much sound, but not from eating a good meal of bugs. When the babies are ready, the male frog opens his mouth and they swim off into the river. Arowana. A R O W H A N A. These fish will actually jump out of the water to get a meal. Arowana swim just below the surface of the river so they can watch for flying bugs. Their big eyes are perfect for watching bugs both in and above the water, and their big mouths ensure the bug gets gobbled up. And if a bug should fall into the river, the arowana is quick to grab an easy meal. But the arowana uses its mouth for more than just eating. The father arowana can also protect the babies by holding them in his mouth. The babies do come out to eat, but quickly swim back into the father's mouth if danger is near. Pipa toad, P I P A T O A D. While it may look like a square pancake with legs, the pipa really is a toad. Its skin and flat body blend in with the river bottom so well, fish never see it. When a fish swims near, the pipa opens its wide mouth and sucks them right inside. The female pipa toad carries her eggs on her back to keep them safe. Once she lays the eggs, the male pipa pushes the eggs onto her soft, sticky back. Her skin covers the eggs, making a little pocket around each egg. When ready, the babies pop out of the pockets and swim away. That trapdoor spider just waits for his meal to stroll by. It's the original home delivery. Agoutis are the only animals able to break open a Brazil nut's tough shell. Some animals are brightly colored to warn other animals that they are poisonous. I don't think there's any doubt about that frog. The Pergamorph grasshopper is a very musical insect. I wonder if it knows how to play Old MacDonald Had a Farm. Agoutis are the only animals able to break open a Brazil nut's tough shell. Agouti. A-G-O-U-T-I. Agoutis wander across the jungle floor, searching for fruit and nuts to eat. One nut that the agouti eats is the Brazil nut. The agouti is the only animal with jaws strong enough to break open the Brazil nut's hard shell. While chewing, the agouti sits up on its hind legs, like a squirrel. An agouti with a full stomach will bury any nut it finds and come back for it later. Forgotten nuts can grow into new jungle trees. Brazil nut, B R A Z I L N U T. The Brazil nut grows at the top of a tree that is over a hundred feet tall. The creamy yellow flowers on the tree turn into round, dark brown pods with about 20 nutshells packed inside. When ripe, the pods fall from the tree to the jungle floor. 
The pod shells are very hard to open. People have to use hammers to open them. In the jungle, only the agouti's sharp teeth and powerful jaws can crack the pods open. Inside are the Brazil nuts. Hard shells with a sweet white core that tastes a bit like coconut. Only nuts that have been chewed by agoutis can grow into Brazil nut trees. So people cannot grow them on farms. They will only grow in the jungle. Poison arrow frog. P O I S O N A R R O W F R O G. Most animals know that this frog's bright colors mean it's poisonous. Jungle natives sometimes put the frog's poison on the tips of arrows, so the frogs were named the poison arrow frog. There can be enough poison in one frog to kill several people. These tiny frogs hunt by day in the understory, feasting on termites and ants. Bromeliad pools are very important to poison arrow frogs, because that is where their babies grow up. When the babies hatch, they are carried to the nearest pool on their parents' back. Pergamorph grasshopper. P. Y. R. G. O. M. O. R. P. H. G. R. A. S. S. H. O. P. P. E. R. Enemies quickly learn to stay away from this grasshopper. Its brightly colored coat warns enemies that this bug is more than just pretty. It is poisonous. The Pergamorph grasshopper can also leave an enemy far behind, because its long back legs can move it several feet in one leap. Its legs can also rub against the front wings, making sounds that attract a mate. Naturalists don't know for sure if it's because of these sounds, but they do know that the Pergamorph grasshopper can hear very well, too. Giant Anteater Giant Anteater G I A N T A N T E A T E R This furry animal may get its name from eating ants, but it also eats termites and bees. It's called giant because it is a lot bigger than the tamandua, pangolin, and other anteaters. Giant anteaters walk on their knuckles instead of their paws to keep their long, sharp claws from getting dull and worn. They move around with their long nose near the jungle floor searching for food. When the giant anteater finds an ant nest, it tears and digs into the nest with its powerful claws and uses its sticky two-foot tongue to catch the ants. 
But even though giant anteaters can eat over 30,000 bugs each day, they only take a few bugs from each ant nest, so the nest doesn't die out. Tamandua, T-A-M-A-N-D-U-A. Of all the animals that eat ants in the jungle, the tamandua is the most common. While they spend most of their time in the canopy, tamanduas are equally at home on the jungle floor. Their tails can grab onto tree branches like a hand, allowing them to safely lean out to lick up a nearby ant. Their curved claws are used to open ant nests and termite nests, exposing the ants and termites inside that the tamanduas grab with their sticky tongues. Mushroom, M-U-S-H-R-O-O-M. Funguses that look like an umbrella with a round cap on top of a stalk are called mushrooms. They live off the dead trees, animal dung, or rotting plants that litter the jungle floor. Mushrooms can be any color except green. A lot of the white or brown mushrooms can be eaten in salads and other dishes. But other mushrooms, especially those with bright colors, are poison. People die every year from eating poisonous mushrooms they thought were safe, so it's safer just to get them at the store. Fungus. F-U-N-G-U-S. Funguses are in a class by themselves because they are not animals and not plants. Molds found growing on bread, mildew growing in the bathroom, and mushrooms are all different types of fungus. Funguses cannot make their own food, so they grow on plants and animals to get food. Funguses grow best in warm, humid areas and are very common in jungles. Many types of fungus are useful, slowly changing the dead plants and animals that they live on into soil. Some funguses are bad because plants get sick when the fungus grows on them, or animals get sick when they eat the fungus. Naturalists know of more than 100,000 types of funguses, but at least twice as many types are still unknown. <laughs> Leaf frog. L-E-A-F-F-R-O-G. The brown speckled skin on leaf frogs is perfect for blending in with the leaves lying on the jungle floor. To be sure they look like a leaf, the frogs have ridges on their back that look like the veins on a leaf. Skin like pointed horns stick over and hide their eyes. Since other animals know, leaves don't have eyes. The leaf frog hopes small animals will ignore it, walking close enough for the leaf frog to snap them up into its wide mouth. C-O-C-K-O-F-T-H-E-R-O-C-K. -E like the peacock, it's the male cock of the rock that is the more colorful. Only the males have the bright orange feathers that make this bird so recognizable. The males gather in big groups on the jungle floor, all using their colorful feathers to try and attract a female. But the male doesn't help the female hatch the eggs. Only the female will sit on the nest because her dull brown feathers make it hard for enemies to spot both her and the nest. To be extra safe, the female often makes her nest on ledges high above the jungle floor. Peacock, P-E-A-C-O-C-K. These birds are known for their fan-like tails which they use to attract a mate. The females are actually called pea hens, and like the female cock of the rock, have dull feathers to make them hard to see when they sit on their nests. Also like the cock of the rock, it is the male that is the colorful one. Both males and females eat seeds, fruits, and bugs. But they are really not very picky and will eat almost anything. People have reported peacocks chasing each other all around the bamboo stalks. Then the peacocks just stop and walk away. Naturalists are still trying to figure out this odd behavior.
Zebra plant. Z E B R A P L A N T. Zebra plants have wide leaves with dark stripes that look like the stripes of a zebra. These plants were first found growing wild in the Amazon jungle. Today, zebra plants are frequently seen in homes and can be bought at almost any flower shop. They usually do not bloom when grown indoors, but wild zebra plants have pretty white flowers. <laughs> Cashew, C A S. H E W. Some nuts, like coconuts and Brazil nuts, are protected by a thick, hard shell. But the cashew nut makes sure it can grow into a new tree in a different way. The cashew tree has sweet-smelling pink flowers growing at the end of a long stalk. When the flowers start to die, the stalks grow into a soft, sweet lump called a cashew apple. The cashew nut, covered by two thin shells, grows on the end of the lump. Between the inner and outer shells of the cashew is a bad-tasting juice that can burn the skin. Most animals learn not to bite the cashew shell and just eat the cashew apples, leaving the cashew nut behind. <laughs> B R A Z I L N U T. The Brazil nut grows at the top of a tree that is over a hundred feet tall. The creamy yellow flowers on the tree turn into round, dark brown pods with about twenty nutshells packed inside. When ripe, the pods fall from the tree to the jungle floor. The pod shells are very hard to open. People have to use hammers to open them. In the jungle, only the agouti's sharp teeth and powerful jaws can crack the pods open. Inside are the Brazil nuts, hard shells with a sweet white core that tastes a bit like coconut. Only nuts that have been chewed by agouti's can grow into Brazil nut trees, so people cannot grow them on farms. They will only grow in the jungle. Either my eyes are going bad, or that's a potu sitting on that log. Beetles are the garbage trucks of the jungle. They haul away all kinds of dead stuff. Either my eyes are going bad, or that's a potu sitting on that log. Pineapple. P I N E A. P P L E. Pineapples are one type of bromeliad. Although they are now grown in many different places, this sweet, juicy fruit first came from the Amazon jungle. Its rough, thorny skin keeps it from being eaten by animals that like its taste. Bromeliad. B R O M E. L I A D. Bromeliads are plants with a special way to water themselves. Bromeliad leaves form a bowl to catch the rainwater as it falls. Large bromeliads can hold as much as a whole bathtub of water in their leaves. Some bromeliads are epiphytes, growing in the canopy trees. Wakaris drink from them. Birds nest in them, and some frog babies grow up in them. There is even a crab that only lives in bromeliad bowls. One type of ground bromeliad even provides fruit for people: the pineapple.
things are going bad, or that's a potu sitting on that log. Beetle. B E E T L E. If a bug has a hard armor covering a soft body and wings, then chances are it's a beetle. Beetles are found all over the world and come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. The Goliath beetle is the largest beetle in the world and yet is only as long as a finger. Some beetles have bright and colorful shells to warn enemies that they are poisonous. Other beetles may smell bad or, like the click beetle, make a noise to scare away attackers. Beetles usually eat dead wood, dead animals, animal dung, and plants. Whether in the jungle or in a backyard, beetles can be found by looking under stones, in the dirt, or on top of ponds and rivers. Click beetle. C L I C K B E E T L E. Flashing light seen in the jungle might really be a kind of bug called the click beetle. Males fly around the floor and understory flashing the red and green glowing bellies at females, who are flashing back with lights on their shoulders. They are called click beetles because of what they do when they are attacked. When the beetle is grabbed, it makes a loud click sound by bending part of its body. The noise surprises the attacker into dropping the click beetle, and the click beetle runs away. The beetle also makes its click noise if it gets flipped over, as it flexes its body to flip back. Peccary, P-E-C-C-A-R-Y. Peccaries can be found walking slowly along the jungle floor. Peccaries may look like pigs, but they're an entirely different kind of animal. Peccaries move so slow because they're sniffing out roots, seeds, young plants, and other things to eat. But when enemies come near, they can run away surprisingly fast. If they can't run away, they make their stiff back hair stand straight up to look bigger, and they show their sharp teeth. Even a jaguar thinks twice about attacking a mad peccary. Postman Caterpillar P-O-S-T-M-A-N-C-A-T-E-R-P-I-L-L-A-R the postman caterpillar uses its ten back legs to hold on to leaves and pulls itself along with its six front legs. Even with six eyes on its head, it can still only see light and dark, but not shapes. To figure out what is around it, the caterpillar uses its feeler's keen sense of smell. Postman caterpillars don't have to worry much about being attacked because they have very few enemies. They can safely eat the poisonous passion flower which then makes the caterpillars poisonous too. When they're old enough, the postman caterpillars turn into very pretty butterflies that are also poisonous. Passion flower. Passion flower. P-A-S-S-I-O-N-F-L-O-W-E-R. Passion flowers are common in the jungle and come in many colors and sizes. From the center of these flowers, brightly colored spines stick out below the petals. The spines keep crawling bugs from eating the beautiful flower. The passion flower is also poison, killing most bugs that eat the flower. The postman caterpillar, however, can safely eat the flower and even stores the poison inside to make itself poisonous. Po two. P O T O O. The potu bird is often mistaken for a tree branch. Its splotchy brown feathers, which look like tree bark, combined with its ability to sit for hours without moving, make the potu hard to see. Sitting next to a tree trunk, the potu is almost invisible, and most enemies can't spot it. During the day, the potu tries to sleep, but at night, their eyes are open and watching so the potu can swoop down on bugs. When sitting on a nest, the potu will sit with its face to the tree trunk, so enemies can't even spot the potu's eyes. Potus hatch one egg at a time, 
and each baby imitates their parents' tree-like pose. <laughs> Cannonball tree. C A N N O N B A L L T R E E. This jungle tree grows fruit that looks like a rusty cannonball. Before the fruit grows, a beautiful pink and orange yellow flower fills the night air with a sweet smell. The cannonball fruit begins to grow after the flower dies, but unlike the flower, it smells really bad. The heavy fruit has a very hard shell that is filled with seeds. When the fruit ripens, it crashes down through the trees to the floor below. Seed S E E D. The beginning of a new plant is called a seed. Seeds come from mature trees and plants. Inside the hard seed cover is a baby plant and food to help the plant grow. Seeds travel by falling, sticking to animal fur, blowing with the wind, or floating on the water. Once they land on the ground, they can start to grow. If they get enough rain, food, and sun, they grow into a plant just like the one which made the seed. When the new plant is big enough, it will make its own seeds. <laughs> Palm tree. P A L M T R E E. Palm trees usually have straight, thin trunks without any branches. Some trunks are as thin as a pencil. While others are as wide as a bed. Unlike most trees, the palm tree's trunk will stay the same size for most of its life. At the top of the trunk grow tough, leathery leaves shaped like a long feather or a wide fan. Palm trees can usually be found growing in any hot jungle. One of the tallest is the coconut palm tree. Naturalists built this bridge so they could get a closer look at life in the canopy. That monkey in the tree sure does love to sleep. Naturalists built this bridge so they could get a closer look at life in the canopy. <laughs> <laughs> the vanilla beans on that vine are just one of the tasty things that grow wild in the jungle. Pygmy Owl. P-Y-G-M-Y-O-W-L. Although most owls are active only at night, this sparrow-sized bird hunts during the day. And while most owls stand very still, the pygmy owl rocks back and forth as it watches the trees for its next meal. When it sees a small bird, the owl quickly flies down and grabs the bird with needle-sharp claws. If a group of small birds spot the pygmy owl first, the birds will attack the owl and try to drive it out of the area. Squirrel monkey. Squirrel monkey. S. Q. 
U I R R E L M O N K E Y. Squirrel monkeys get their name from their small size and the short, jerky movements that are so like a squirrel's. Squirrel monkeys travel in large groups, swinging through the canopy trees until food is found, and then coming together to eat. While they like the safety of the canopy, they will travel down to the understory and floor in their search for berries, nuts, and fruits. Squirrel monkeys will also gobble up insects, spiders, lizards, Watson eggs, and even tent bats. When they aren't eating, they play and take turns cleaning each other's short fur. Naturalists built this bridge so they could get a closer look at life in the canopy. Night monkey. N I G H T M O N K E Y. These are the only monkeys awake at night. Although they do take a nap around midnight, the rest of the night the night monkeys look for food all through the jungle. Floor to pavilion, they can see so well in the dark that they can reach out and catch bugs as they fly by. During the day, they sleep cuddled together in a hollow tree. Night monkeys are also called owl monkeys because they're awake at night and because their calls can sound like an owl's hoot. Vanilla B A N I L L A. Thin foot long vanilla pods hang down from these long vines. When fully grown, the pods fall from the vines to the jungle floor. Plant eating animals like the agouti enjoy eating the pods just the way they are. People prefer the vanilla seeds inside the pods, but only after the pods are processed. The pods are repeatedly dipped in water and spread out in the sun to dry. Once the sunshine turns them dark brown and kind of rubbery, the pods are opened and the tiny seeds are scraped out. The seeds are made into the liquid vanilla that is used in baking. Liquid vanilla is used to make cookies, cakes, and other things to eat. That sloth is so slow, it'll take one whole day to climb down and go to another tree. <laughs> there sure are a lot of epiphytes in canopy trees. That sloth is so slow, it'll take one whole day to climb down and go to another tree. Passion flower. P A S S I O N F L O W E R. Passion flowers are common in the jungle and come in many colors and sizes. From the center of these flowers, brightly colored spines stick out below the petals. The spines keep crawling bugs from eating the beautiful flower. The passion flower is also poison, killing most bugs that eat the flower. The postman caterpillar, however, can safely eat the flower and even stores the poison inside to make itself poisonous. That sloth is. That pygmy marmoset is the only kind of monkey that chews holes in trees. There sure are a lot of epiphytes in canopy trees.
Hummingbird, H U M M I N G B I R D. The wings of these tiny birds beat so fast, it sounds like someone humming. Flying this fast makes them really hungry, so they eat a lot of tiny bugs and sweet flower nectar. Hummingbirds spend most of their day eating and looking for more food, flying anywhere from the lower understory trees to the top of the canopy. Hummingbirds are also able to hover, which is useful if there are no branches to hang on to while eating. All hummingbirds are small, but the smallest type weighs only as much as a dime. Even their nests are small, with most hummingbird nests being about the size of a walnut shell. Bro Bromeliad. B R O M E L I. A, D. Bromeliads are plants with a special way to water themselves. Bromeliad leaves form a bowl to catch the rainwater as it falls. Large bromeliads can hold as much as a whole bathtub of water in their leaves. Some bromeliads are epiphytes, growing in the canopy trees. Wakaris drink from them. Birds nest in them, and some frog babies grow up in them. There is even a crab that only lives in bromeliad bowls. One type of ground bromeliad even provides fruit for people. The pineapple. Wakari monkey. U-A-K-A-R-I-M-O-N-K-E-Y. Slow. The red bald faces of these monkeys are a big change from their shaggy bodies. Wakaris may look fat but they are really quite skinny underneath all their thick fur. Their short tails cannot hold on to tree branches, but this does not slow them down at all. They have a great sense of balance and can move gracefully and quickly through the high canopy trees. Howl Howler monkey. H-O-W L E R M O N K E Y. Each morning, these monkeys give a good loud howl to warn others to stay out of their home area. A group of howler monkeys can be heard for miles in the jungle. Howler monkeys spend their days sitting in the trees, picking leaves, flowers, and fruit to eat. If they see their favorite food in a nearby tree, they don't jump to it. Instead, they hold on to one tree with their tail and grab the other tree's branches with their hands, pulling it to them and climbing aboard. When their bellies are full, they move on to new trees and take a nap. At night, they move to the trees in the center of their home area and go to sleep. Wo Wooly Monkey W-O-O-L-L-Y M-O-N-K-E-Y These monkeys have thick woolly fur, which is how they got their name. Woolly monkeys travel together in big groups, looking for food in both the canopy and understory. Sometimes they climb high into the pavilion to reach a favorite fruit tree. Because woolly monkeys spend most of their lives in trees, they are excellent climbers. Their long tail acts like a fifth hand to hold on to tree branches, and it also helps them keep their balance. Ti Tiger Moth. T-I-G-E-R-M-O-T-H. The orange and black tiger wing markings warn enemies that this moth tastes bad. But at night, it's hard to see the warning colors, so the moth has other ways to keep enemies away. The moth sits and waits until an enemy is uncomfortably close and then darts out of reach. 
If a bat attacks, it makes loud clicking noises that confuse the bat. The tiger moth can also squirt a drop of bad-smelling liquid from its head, which makes most enemies go look for something less stinky to eat. Pygmy Marmoset. P-Y-G-M-Y-M-A-R-M-O-S-E-T. Pygmy marmosets are one of the smallest monkeys in the world. The pygmy marmosets are good climbers, using their sharp claws to grab onto tree trunks. They eat tree sap, which they get by biting holes in the tree with their razor-sharp teeth. When feeding, the marmosets constantly chatter among themselves, like a flock of birds. Although noisy, pygmy marmosets are hard to find, because their golden-green fur blends in with the tree leaves. Kasik, C A C I Q U E. In addition to the parrot, kasiks may be the noisiest birds along the river. These black and yellow birds even copy other birds' songs to make their own song one of the best. Once they've won a mate with their noisy music, the females weave a drooping nest shaped like a raindrop. The nest is made of grass, twigs, and leaves. This raindrop shape keeps their babies safe from enemies and also keeps the babies from falling out of the nest. Sloth. S-L-O-T-H. Sloths look like a shaggy rug moving very, very slowly through the trees. In fact, it can take a sloth one whole day to do what a spider monkey can do in a few seconds. Sloths spend most of their life eating and sleeping upside down in the canopy. They are hard to spot among the green tree leaves because their fur has tiny plants growing on it that make it look green. Other things also live in the sloth's fur. Naturalists found beetles, moss, caterpillars, and other bugs living on just one sloth. Parrot. P A R. R O T. Parrots are friendly birds that fly through the canopy in big, noisy flocks. They make many different sounds and even repeat the songs of other birds. Most parrots are green or gray, but others are more colorful, like the macaws. Parrots can hang like acrobats to get fruit, which they hold in one foot to eat. They also eat seeds and nuts, which are easily opened with their nutcracker like beaks. When it is time to raise babies, hollow trees are their favorite places to build a nest. There's any treasure hidden inside that cave. That emerald tree boa looks just like a vine in that tree. That tarantula is huge. Good thing I'm not afraid of spiders. Well, not too much. It looks like that lizard has a balloon stuck in his throat.
are reptiles. Except for a slightly wider mouth, they are almost identical to their cousin, the crocodile. They spend a lot of time in the river, using the back and forth movement of their tail to move them through the water. Caimans are not fussy eaters and grab whatever food they can catch. When they see a fish, snake, or bird, the caiman's big mouth can swallow them with one gulp. They will even pull capybaras off the beach. Sometimes, caiman will lose their teeth as they gobble up their food. But there is no such thing as a toothless caiman, because their teeth always grow back. Macaw, M-A-C-A-W. This bird is one of the most colorful parrots around. Their loud screeching noises, slow flapping wings, and long tails also make them easy to spot. Macaws spend their days looking for seeds, nuts, and fruits. Macaw nests are built in holes in trees, usually in the understory or canopy part of the jungle. Macaws are popular pets because they are friendly and can be trained to repeat words. Tarantula. T A R A N T U L A. With its legs stretched out, this big spider is about the size of a dinner plate. Because their eyes are so poor, tarantulas are covered with long, sensitive hairs that help them feel their way over the jungle floor. Living in underground burrows, they come out at night to hunt for insects and small animals. Tarantulas are often used in movies, where they are supposed to be deadly spiders. But tarantula poison is made to paralyze small creatures, so it is nothing more than a painful bite for people. Anole, A-N-O-L-E. Lying on a tree branch or rock, these long, thin lizards stay very still, so enemies won't notice them. Anoles are also compared to another reptile, the chameleon because they can both change their skin color when hiding. When they are angry, male anoles inflate a bright red throat flap to make them look bigger and more menacing. Some anoles also appear to use the flaps to signal other anoles. Like the flying gecko, anoles are excellent climbers and hold on to tree branches with sticky toe pads. Flying gecko. F L Y I N G, G, E, C, K, O. The flying gecko lives high in the jungle canopy and pavilion, moving from tree to tree by flying. To be honest, the flying gecko doesn't fly at all. It glides. Flaps of skin along their body, on their tail and between their toes, open up to slow their fall when they jump to another tree. Their long toes have sharp claws which they use to grab onto the tree branch when they land. Flying geckos are busiest at night, when the jungle is cooler and fewer enemies are awake. Sun bittern. S-U-N-B-I-T-T-E-R-N. This shy bird stalks quietly along shaded riverbanks looking for food. The sun bittern hunts for bugs, frogs, and other small animals that it can spear with its beak. Its speckled feathers blend in with the colors of the jungle floor, making the sun bittern hard to see. When the sun bittern spreads its feathers, the fine patterns on the underside of their wings can be seen. Although they spend lots of time on the jungle floor, 
Sun bitterns build their bulky stick and mud nests in the nearby understory trees. Emerald tree boa. E M E R A L D T R E E B O A. Lying on a tree, these bright green snakes look like leaves, a liana, or an epiphyte. They hold onto the branches with their tails, just like a spider monkey does. Emerald tree boas lie very still, waiting for animals to fly or walk by. They are so quick, they can even catch a bird as it flies by. When a small animal comes close, the boa quickly grabs the animal with its long fangs. Like the python, boas wrap their body around their victims and kill by squeezing rather than by poison. And since they don't have any chewing teeth, the boas swallow their food in one big piece. Liana, L I A N A. Rope like vines called lianas hang in the canopy of almost every jungle in the world. They grow up from the jungle floor through the understory and loop through the canopy treetops. In the movies, people swing through the jungle on these vines, but not in real life. However, some lianas can be climbed like ladders. Others have water in them, so people chop them in two when they want a drink. Cacao. C A C A O. Cocoa and chocolate are made from the seeds of the cacao tree. The seeds are inside large oval fruits, which grow straight out from the cacao tree's trunk. The fruit has a white, sweet mush inside that monkeys and other animals like to eat. To make cocoa, people gather the fruit, remove the seeds from the mush, and then dry and toast the seeds. Pure cocoa is not sweet, so sugar is added when making the cocoa into chocolate. Cacao trees. First grew only in South America, but now most of the cacao farms are in Africa. Coati, C O A T I. Coatis have black rings on their tails, just like their cousin, the raccoon. Coatis search for fruit in the understory and canopy trees, using their tails to stay balanced. When they come down to the jungle floor, they waddle along looking for fallen fruit, or use their long noses to dig for turtle eggs. Mothers travel in groups, constantly making a whining sound to let their babies know where they are. When frightened, their calls of alarm send all nearby coatis running up trees or under bushes. Those cave tetras are blind. If you live in a dark cave, I suppose you don't need eyes. Yuck! I licked one of those stalactites hanging from the ceiling. I thought it was an icicle. This cave was probably made thousands of years ago by river water slowly wearing the rock away. No wonder it feels so wet in here. Those cave tetras are blind. If you live in a dark cave, I suppose you don't need eyes.
ready? Okay, triangle. Stalagmite. S T A L A G M I T E. Stalagmites stand like a pillar at the bottom of a cave. When water drips in a cave, it leaves a tiny bit of stone behind when it hits the ground. Each bit of stone sits on top of the last bit, and over a long time, all the little bits of stone make a really tall pillar. Sometimes there are a lot of stalagmites in a row. And they look like stone curtains. While they are a lot like stalactites, remember that stalagmites are found only on the bottom of a cave. Cave tetra. C A V E T E T R A. Since these fish live in the dark pools and rivers of underground caves, they don't need to see. Cave tetras are born with eyes. But the eyes are usually covered with skin by the time they are adults. Instead of eyes, they have tiny hairs all over their body that help them feel their way. As it passes by animals and plants, the feelers tell the tetras if it's food or an enemy. If it's an enemy, cave tetras can squirt a poisonous fluid that scares the enemy away. Click beetle. C. Vampire bat. V A M P I R E B A T. Vampire bats are small, only as big as a sparrow. Groups of 100 to 6,000 bats can be found hanging in caves during the day. At night, the bats fly along rivers and openings in the understory, looking for sleeping animals. They can't walk at all once they land, but can be seen hopping along the jungle floor. While it is true that these bats drink blood for food, they are mostly harmless. Their quick, painless bite doesn't even wake a sleeping animal. Vampire bats don't really suck blood, but gently lap up the blood from the bite. Water opossum. W A T E R O P. O S S U M. Splashing about a cave's river and pools, the water opossum is right at home. They have webbed feet, waterproof fur, and rough paws that are perfect for grabbing slippery water creatures. Since they close their eyes when swimming underwater, they use their sensitive fingers to help them find food. Once they've caught a meal, they swim to shore to eat it. Gold, G O L D. Most rocks and dirt have bits of this shiny yellow metal in them, but it would cost too much money to get the gold out. When a big layer of pure gold is found in the rock of a cave wall, people can make a lot of money from it. Gold is a very soft metal, and it will often bend instead of break. Its softness makes it very useful for making things. And people have used it to make jewelry for thousands of years. Electricity can pass through gold very easily. Gold is used in jewelry, teeth fillings, spaceships, TVs, and computers. Stalactite. S T A L A C T I T E. Stalactites may look like icicles, but are really made of stone and hang inside caves. When water drips in a cave, it leaves tiny bits of stone on the ceiling. As each bit of stone is left behind, it is left on top or next to the last bit. Over time, this forms the shape of a stalactite. Long stalactites may take hundreds of years to grow. Stalactites are sometimes confused with stalagmites. Just remember that the stalactite must hold tight to the cave ceiling to stay up there.
Wow, check out the face on that monkey on the left. Somebody must have really embarrassed him. Some say the Quetzal is the most beautiful bird in the world. Wow, check out the face on that monkey on the left. Somebody must have really embarrassed him. Those long arms and legs do kind of make the spider monkey look like a spider. Toucan. T O U C A N. Toucans certainly have one of the largest beaks of any jungle bird. Some toucans have a beak as long as their body. The beak looks heavy, but it is really very light and perfect for reaching into a tree to get fruit. Toucans have an unusual way of eating. With the fruit on their beak tip, toucans throw back their head and toss the food into their mouth. Sometimes, two toucans will even toss fruit to each other. Besides eating fruit, toucans also eat bugs, reptiles, and eggs from bird nests. Wakari monkey. U-A-K-A-R-I-M-O-N-K-E-Y The red bald faces of these monkeys are a big change from their shaggy bodies. Wakaris may look fat, but they are really quite skinny underneath all their thick fur. Their short tails cannot hold on to tree branches, but this does not slow them down at all. They have a great sense of balance and can move gracefully and quickly through the high canopy trees. T A M A N D U A of all the animals that eat ants in the jungle, the tamandua is the most common. While they spend most of their time in the canopy, tamanduas are equally at home on the jungle floor. Their tails can grab onto tree branches like a hand, allowing them to safely lean out to lick up a nearby ant. Their curved claws are used to open ant nests and termite nests, exposing the ants and termites inside that the tamanduas grab with their sticky tongues. Q U E T Z A L. These just might be the most beautiful birds in the world. Their colorful feathers and long tails are an amazing sight. Quetzals can be found in the understory and canopy, sitting quietly on a branch. They pick berries and other fruit with their beaks, hovering in front of the fruit if there's nowhere to sit. Like the toucan, Quetzals like to toss the food up in the air and then gulp it down. <laughs> Spider monkey. S-P-I-D-E-R-M-O-N-K-E-Y the spider monkey's long arms and legs make it look like a giant spider. 
Its loud scream and long crashing leaps make it one of the noisiest animals in the canopy. Spider monkeys travel in groups of about 20, looking for fruit, flowers, and leaves. Their tails can grab a tree branch like a hand, freeing their real hands to grab even more food. Kinkajou, K-I-N-K-A-J-O-U. At night, these creatures are seen scurrying about in the canopy trees. The kinkajou is a cousin of the koati. Kinkajous can use their long tail like a hand to grab onto tree branches, helping them climb. And their sharp claws let them climb head first down the tree without falling. But most amazing are their back feet, which have ankles that allow the feet to face backwards. So when they're climbing down a tree, their back feet can be pointing up while the rest of their body is pointing down. Golden Lion Tamarin, G-O-L-D-E-N-L-I-O-N-T-A-M-A-R-I-N. Tamarins are one of the smallest monkeys in the world. Golden Lion Tamarins have long golden hair around their faces, which looks like a lion's mane. This hair sticks straight out when they're trying to scare away enemies. Tamarins travel in groups, feeding on fruit in the canopy and drinking water from bromeliad pools. Their small hands are useful for reaching into tree cracks and pulling out bugs to eat. At night, they sleep together in hollow trees. <coughs> Red-eyed tree frog, R E D E Y E D T R E E F R O G. At night, these small frogs jump from branch to branch in the canopy trees. When they land, their sticky toes help them cling tightly to the tree branches. Tree frog babies need to grow up in water, so red-eyed tree frogs lay their eggs on leaves hanging over a river or pond. When the eggs hatch, the baby frogs drop into the water below. Gee, you can see all three jungles from up here. and type in your name and I, Buzzy the Knowledge Bug, will keep track of your score as we play. How easy or how hard do you want the game to be?
you found it! Let's find another! Okay, let's see if you can find this one! Good luck! Down below is a picture of the item. Now you have to go find it. Congratulations! You found it! Let's find another! Okay, let's see if you can find this one! Good luck! Down below is a picture of the item. Now you have to go find it! Congratulations! You found it! Let's find another! Okay, let's see if you can find this one! Good luck! Down below is a picture of the item. Now you have to go find it! Way to go! You found it! Let's find another! Okay, let's see if you can find this one! Good luck! Wanna play a game? I'm ready when you are! Do you wanna play easy, medium, or hard? This game is Jungle Jumble! Try to unscramble these words. Click on a letter to pick it up. Move it to where you want it and click again to put it down. As you get the letters right, the picture unscrambles. On this level, everything starts out scrambled. Have fun! The word is mandrel monkey. The letters with little screws in them can't be moved. L. The letters with little screws in them can't be moved. M. The word is crocodile. Now unscramble it. C R. The word is flying frog. to Anteater Feeder. In this game, you're a hungry anteater trying to get lunch. Keep an eye on the face at the bottom of the screen. It will show you if you like what you're eating. The tongue shows you how much energy you have. And the picture of the anteater shows you how full you are. Let's get started. Level 1. You need to get 5 of these 2 points. You got twenty and needed five. Good job. Level two. You need to get five of these two points. You got 
20 and needed 5. Good job! Level 3. You need to get 6 of these 2 points. How hard do you want the game to be? Are you ready for some trivia? Not only do knowledge bugs like to answer questions, we love to ask them too. That's how we get to learn so much great stuff. So now, I'm going to ask you some questions and you can tell me the answers. Good luck! How about this? A pygmy hippopotamus is about the size of... A pygmy hippopotamus is about the size of... Super! A mot, -mot is a kind of... Bird! Good one! What do you call the imaginary line around the middle of the Earth? Super! Which of these is a type of piranha that only eats fruits and plants? An archer fish. A mussel. A paku. Reptiles have waterproof skin. Yes! Do you want to play another game?